Forty-five dollars just came through. Oh, from selling uh, merchandise retail. I'm telling you, bro. Retail is a massive kicker. So since we're live and we're recording, maybe I should put that out there. This is it? Endless Endeavor podcast T-shirts are available on my Electric North Jiu-Jitsu website. If you are interested and want to rep the brand and uh, pretty much have the coolest shirt around. And support Greg Anderson and his family. So we are back down in Mandeville. Did I say that right? We are in Mandeville. That's Mandeville, correct. Louisiana. You know, last time I came down here, I said we were in New Orleans. People got mad at me for that. Especially if you say New Orleans. That's what I'm no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The way that I pronounce it. And if you said Nolens, that's even worse. Like you can get a dick punched right away. New Orleans. New Orleans. That's good. That's good. I see, I'm from Seattle. How the fuck <laughs> am I supposed to know that stuff? <laughs> so we came down. Our guns and geese camp is in two weeks. Actually, I came down. As you know, Lappin lives here, and we have our range and or our sh pistol shooting and jujitsu. What are we calling that? Immersion camp? Immersion camp, yeah. I so think that's a, the best word. And it's a, a three-day course, and it happens, I mean, I think it'll be happening the week this podcast drops. Yeah, awesome. Which, it's not, it doesn't matter because it's sold out anyways, but we're going to be doing more. And so, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be doing more down here. The next one, I think we're going to shoot for down here as well. Yep. yep. Do we have any tentative dates if we were to put something out? Mm, man, I don't want to, I don't want to tease it too much, but I, I, I think it's safe to say that maybe within the next four months, okay. drop in another set of dates. Yeah. And then by that time, hopefully we'll have uh, something set up in Seattle as well. So Guns and Geese is going global. Fuck yeah. Like it or not. Guns and Geese West. <laughs> guns and Geese everywhere. Everyone really should be doing Guns and Geese. Um. Yeah, so if you guys don't know what Guns and Geese is, we have decided to put together this immersion camp as an introduction to pistol shooting and introduction to jiu-jitsu. And I'll tell you right now, tonight's episode is going to be jiu-jitsu heavy because whenever me and Lappin hang out, that's just how it goes. And then a lot of law enforcement stuff because he's still an active duty law enforcement officer and just a lot of topics we've discussed over the last three days I think are important. So it should be a good podcast. And the more, was this Jameson? This is Jameson. The more Jameson we, we drink. The more entertaining it becomes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the camp, and I, every time we talk about it, I like to reiterate this. It's three days. And what can you learn in three days? You can learn and be taught a lot of fucking information in three days. Now, how much of it you retain that's really up to the individual. We This was a big topic for you and I this week, you know, talking about what can you gain from a two-day course or an eight-hour course, et cetera. Well, you can learn best practices. You're not going to master it. And unless you go out and practice it, you're not going to retain it. You know, and I try to tell people there's a difference between training and practice. Break it down. Training, you are learning new techniques from a subject matter expert. Not fucking watching videos online, not YouTube and shit. You're learning from a subject matter expert the proper way to do something. Once you've learned that technique, then you go take it and put it into practice where you're getting multiple repetitions and you're streamlining that technique, making it more efficient really for you, your mission set, your skill set, you know, your ROEs, whatever it may be, rules of engagement little Andy Stumpf fucking acronym throw out right there. <laughs> and, um, you know, then you practice it. You're getting your reps. You're starting to commit that into the, the common term is muscle memory, but whatever you want to call it, you know, where you become subconscious or unconscious competence by practicing what we've learned in training. Yeah. So there's a big difference between training and practice. No, I really, dude. I don't know why you waited till right now to tell me that. I got little nuggets of fucking gold for you. <laughs> no, because that's on, literally, dude. like, that's all encompassing to what we've been talking about all week. Because you can go to the range and, or you can go to jiu-jitsu for two or three days and attend some type of course that's taught by whoever. And like we always say, it's not going to give you a level of proficiency that you can then go utilize those skills in a real world scenario. Absolutely. Quite honestly, I, I don't I don't think it really gives you any upper hand 
Yeah. Quite honestly. Well, and we'll just go right into it. Like we were talking about women's self-defense and that's a topic we wanted to talk about tonight because a lot of places will be like, ladies only, three, yeah. three yeah. hour seminar on Saturday yeah. afternoon yeah. to teach you self-defense tactics that'll save your life. Then it's like, no, we can show you techniques. Just like you said, I think that's a perfect way to articulate it. We can show you techniques that you can then, during a training scenario or training session, show you the techniques, and then you're going to have to practice them. Absolutely. And practice them. And practice over them. Over and over and over again. And I mean, you don't have to train an extensive amount of jujitsu to be able to use it against untrained people. But you have to practice it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what the difference. You, and what do you think, what's your magic number that you tell new students before jiu-jitsu starts to come together? We'll see if we're on the same page. Who, like hours wise? No, I, I break it down in months. Well, I tell them, I said, you need to train three days. If you want to take jujitsu seriously, you need to commit to three days a week. Two days a week, you can make some improvements. One day a week, don't even sign up. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in a matter, if, if, so if you're training consistently, i.e. three days a week or more, how many months? So I see a big jump at three, but That's I really it. say six. Okay. When I, We're when on the I, same page. Then. Yeah. So this is what I, yeah, I tell my students the exact same thing. I say three months to buy off on jujitsu. Yeah. Yes. I said, if you, if you, you're standing in my academy, therefore, there's something about jujitsu that's intriguing to you. You want to understand it. You want to be part of what this is. Give it three months. Yes. Because for the first month, you're going to feel like a fish you're drinking flopping from a around. Fire hose. And for people that have never utilized their body in a manner that's utilized in jujitsu, especially the biggest thing that I think people have a problem with is utilizing their feet in a manner where you're gripping and pushing oh, yeah. and making connections with people. Because since the time we were fucking two, the only thing you did with your feet is walk around. Yep. So three months to start to understand jujitsu, and then yeah, six months before yeah. like you're like winning something against yeah. a new walk in. Yep. You know? And that's that's the moment when you've been training for say three to six months and all your training partners this is what people get frustrated with because if you're the brand new person and there's a person that's three months ahead of you and they're beating you, three months from now, both of you oh, yeah. have been making incremental steps. Unless upward. one's vastly more athletic or younger or yeah. whatever than the other, you're growing together at the same rate. So if you're the newest person in the academy, and I've actually got a lot of growth lately, so we're getting a lot of new people, which is a great thing. But there was a period of time where I'd get a new member and that person would be the new guy for three or four months. Yeah. And He's so getting just smashed yeah, and fucking annihilated. That person doesn't realize how much they're progressing because they're in the shark tank. Oh yeah. And as they get better, so do all the people that are smashing them. I tell every one of my new guys, and I think without fail, the ones that come and talk to me and actually tell me without fail, I tell my every one of my new guys, in three months you're gonna come to me and you're gonna be upset. <laughs> and you say, coach, man, I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting it. So-and-so is still smashing me. And I'm going to tell you, you don't know shit. You are getting better. Trust me. Yeah. You just don't recognize it yet because we're all getting better together. But I see it. Yep. I feel it. You don't know enough yet to recognize whether you're getting better. And at about that time, a new guy is going to walk in. And they do whatever they roughly want. Roughly your size or roughly, you know. Yep. And another grown-ass man and you're going to do whatever you want to him. And you're going to come to me later that week and it go, works. coach, you're right. No shit. I know. Right. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I've been doing this. And you know, it's funny, you know, going back to the practicing and using your feet. I had this conversation with one of my, one of my students the other day. Uh, I was doing a private lesson for one of my white belts, super athletic. He was a bodybuilder and a power lifter for a long time. Uh, he's a fireman, super fit. And uh, he's the guy that came in yesterday. For your private? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yesterday for my private. And um, we were talking about moving his hips more. I said, look, you're still a little flat. I want you to get more on your side, more on your hips. And he's like, man, I'm having a problem getting my foot over. And I said, it's not your foot. It's not your flexibility. I said, you're still not moving your hips. Well, what can I do? To, what can I do to get this move down better? And I said, practice. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's some movements that you can't really teach 
you have to gain the feel of it over time, over mm -hmm. time. Just our monkey feet. Yeah. I didn't get, I knew what it was. I knew the concept and theory behind using my feet and hooking with my feet and my toes and my, you know, inflection in my feet because I had black belts doing it to me forever. And it wasn't until kind of late in my purple belt that I was like, bing, bing, bing. Yeah, oh, I, I can do this now. Yeah, it's yeah. not even that now I understand it. It's like now I can do this. And it yeah. was just time on the mat. And that's that's the case with everything. I don't care what it is. Piano, fucking, you know, drinking whiskey, you know? <laughs> No, I like that because nobody expects to be good at piano in three months. No, but they expect to be good at this in three months. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. Do you, who would attend a three-hour piano seminar and expect to have any fucking type of proficiency in the piano? Yeah, go play in a fucking orchestra <laughs> or whatever, you know? Yeah, no, going and playing in an orchestra or playing a, even just a song. Yeah. Play a song. That's not Mary had a little lamb. Right. After a three hour piano seminar. Yeah. That's the same correlation you can make to win a fight with jujitsu after a three hour jujitsu seminar. Shit, we were talking about it. Uh, we were talking about it the other night, right? That nobody thinks um, they can play some basketball and go out and play with the NBA stars. Yeah. Right? Yep. But a lot of guys think that, oh, I could go out in the UFC and, and fight those guys. Yes, like I'm a tough no, dude. I no, can that's, fight. That's exactly right. And um, it's the same thing like with with grappling. And I mean, we even brought up, there's a meme that's circulating around. I think it might have stemmed from Joe Rogan, but it says like the average male overestimates his fighting 5, ability. 5,000% or something. 5,000%. 5, <laughs> and I think that that's accurate. 100%. That was me. Because when I was 22 and I was young and that strong us, and us. athletic. <laughs> right. And I won a lot of bar yeah. fights. Yep. Which what, I don't even know what winning a bar fight is. It's just getting in stupid confrontations with other guys that are not, drunk. Not <sighs> yeah. getting knocked out. And you think that you have an ability to fight. And really, you have an ability to take advantage of stupid drunk people. That's right. not fighting. No, no, no. And be more athletic or be more resilient or tougher, you know, like or you know, the only thing that's ever carried me through this is I had a hard jaw. Uh-huh. Like I just I I couldn't get knocked out easily so i'd get hit and be like yeah and fucking get fired up and you get in seven ten twenty five of those incidents and then you think like oh this is oh, what fighting is that's right i'm a good fighter maybe i could fight chuck liddell right <laughs> 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 yeah. they're throwing punches i throw punches yeah that's right dude no that's and and so if you go and train for a day and then this is especially with women's self-defense because, and I keep bringing that up because I don't think there's many programs outside of like the law enforcement world where we'll go back to that yep. shortly. We're going to go back. To we're going to go back. We're, yeah, not we're not going to. Yeah. No, we're not going to say that. Yeah. We're not going to go that way. Yeah. We're back just going to go it. back to that topic. We're going we're to go straight back to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but women's self-defense seminars i honestly feel like are almost preying on their vulnerabilities 100 percent. i don't i turn them down i turn them down too because because if you tell a young lady who if she's coming to uh, so i can tell you i've had friends that have went through traumatic experiences with maybe an abusive boyfriend or there's there's a reason in their life that they have they're fearful of another person right, right? hey can you maybe spend a few hours and, and go over some stuff. No. no, because what I run the risk of doing is letting that young lady think false hope that she now has a capability to defend herself that she does not, that she does not. Yep. 100%. You know? And, uh, and this isn't a, 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 a ladies versus guys thing. Nope. I have girls that will strangle every single man that I know that does yep. not train. And so, Instead of telling a lady, like, yeah, let's let's spend three hours together and then maybe you'll be able to defend yourself. It's like, no, start coming to practice. And that's exactly what I say. I have I, I get that a lot at the academy, right? And I get a lot of those phone calls. Do you guys teach self-defense? Yes, we do. We teach Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Okay, well, you know, when when can I come to a course? I, I need a, I want a self-defense course for me and my daughter, whatever it is, you know. Well, just you know, come down, take do a class, see if you like it. Well, do you guys do like a, you know, a thing on a self-defense class on Saturdays or anything? Well, no. So I don't do a one-off self-defense class. I said, honestly, that's a waste of your money and your time and it's dangerous for you. 
what you can do is you can come and sign up and train jujitsu regularly throughout the week. Use it as a form of exercise, meet new people, and learn about the art and the sport and, and the combativeness of it or the, the self-defense aspect of Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah. and gain a real capability uh -huh. and have fun doing it. Yeah. But three-hour course on a Saturday morning, you're wasting your time. Wasting your time. And you've got a uh, false, a false sense of capability. Yep. Now, I will say this. As far as utilizing your jiu-jitsu in a combat application, you're going to need to put some time in before that works. But to be able to feel the benefits, feel your fitness increase, feel your energy levels increase, be surrounded by people that are like you feel a sense of camaraderie with, all that shit starts to happen almost immediately. Day one, pretty Day much, one. you know, if you let it. Yeah. And it's awesome. No, I wanted to read. Uh, I wanted to read an email that I literally got three hours ago. That was the one. Yeah, that I dude, read to you read and your it, wife in, in the kitchen it, it's and it's because it's fucking inspiring. It's cool because you and I are sitting at your jujitsu academy talking about jujitsu, and then it goes out into the the interwebs, and you never know who's getting it. Right. And I always tell people the podcast is cool for me, if for no other reason to sit down with my homies and kind of connect. Yeah. Because how often do you do just one-on-one -on -one shooting the shit with your Forever. friends? For, yeah. For as, as long as we yeah. can. Three hours And or it's whatever, cool, yeah. right? But then you get an email like this and it's like, fuck, dude, this is actually changing people's life. Yeah, yeah. And I was actually thinking about it in the back of your academy while we, you guys were running kids class. And I was like, I'm, I think this will be episode 40. So we're 40 episodes into this thing. And each episode is two to three hours. So that's a substantial amount of time dedicated to this podcast and this one email is like made it worth it it's worth it yeah like i enjoy doing it anyways but feeling like what you're doing has validity to it yeah. it's fucking rad and so i got an email from a lady and she was she's referencing her husband who listened to the podcast so i'll just read it it says hi greg you probably get tons of dms but i just wanted to thank you my fiance and i are high school sweethearts we have literally grown up together. He grew up wrestling from the time he was a little boy all the way through high school. He was captain of the varsity team his senior year, and they won state. After school, he had offers from some small colleges to wrestle, but he decided he was done, burnt out, and wanted to go into the construction field instead. Fast forward a few years. He has really struggled with anxiety, depression, and pretty much hasn't worked out since high school. We got a membership to the Y, and we have a baby now. And we did that because we could take her there with us. But then COVID hit, and obviously they canceled our plans and our workouts. Then, one day, I saw your video over Instagram, and I showed it to him. He does not have social media. We, we agreed with everything that you said in your video. So we started listening to your podcast and discussing some of the topics together. And it was crazy, because I swear his, atti his attitude started changing. I think he felt like he wasn't the only guy that had gone through some tough times. He started seeing a counselor still suffering from depression and anxiety and having some of the darkest days I've ever witnessed him have. So he decided to give jujitsu a try. He is literally only a couple weeks in and he is already back to his old self. He is, he is so excited to go to class. He is full of energy when he gets home and for the following days after, like you always said, I don't know anyone who regrets doing jiu-jitsu. I know it's a really long message, but I had to put every word into it. For someone that is doing something that you have done, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Fucking awesome. There it is. And like, here you, you have a guy who has grappled his entire youth. Like, he already knows grappling. Yeah. His body already knows it. Yep. He's probably one of those guys that shows up to practice and... It starts to click. I saw the picture. He's, it seems like a pretty stout, big boy, and it's like, ooh, he's going to be trouble to deal with. <laughs> with the cauliflower ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout yeah. out, cauliflower ear. But it's true. I mean, Luke. Luke set all this equipment up for us. You know, he's got all his podcast stuff. When I first met Luke, it was out at a shooting course. He came to one of my shooting pistol shooting courses. And I came out there. I had other instructors running it because I was building out the first academy i went out there to meet all the students hey guys nice to meet you i'm greg sorry i can't be here i'm doing this 
everyone should come by, check out the new academy, and start training jiu-jitsu and change your life. And he came in like, I don't know, a week or so later. And you can ask, I mean, how much did you weigh? I don't think I was weighing myself then. So yeah, yeah, yeah. More than 210. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's, I mean, he dropped a ton of weight. Uh-huh. Just from jujitsu, he yeah. wasn't lifting, wasn't working. He was in the gym every day, training, being around that positive energy, uh, you know, and now he's a freaking monster. You yeah. Know? So, and something I always tell new people, because just like you said, he lost a ton of weight. He started getting in shape. People are very reluctant to start jujitsu when they are out of shape Gotta because they feel like I need to get in shape before I go fight people. There's no better way to get in shape than fighting than people. Fighting people. Yeah, yeah. But the coolest thing about that email is I've got a lot of positive feedback that I am completely open and transparent about like having gone through bouts of depression. Oh, yeah. Bad bouts of depression. And I mean, you served overseas for a long time and dealt with some PTS issues yourself. But I don't I don't like to put the depression hat on veterans right because you could be a fucking plumber and if you're struggling financially and you and your wife are having some issues right. that shit can get its hooks in you and it doesn't really matter like i think the veterans community gets a lot of the focus because of i mean it just is what it is it's right in the media it's in the media and we saw fucked up shit and right. They killed people and all the stuff that people think depression is attached to. Which can, none of my depression issues have ever been from any of that. Yeah, I know. As crazy as it sounds. No, I'm the same you know? way. Like, I think the stuff that caused a lot of depression and, and issues in my life was like relationship problems, financial problems, not feeling like you fit in, not having your tribe. Right. And so when this guy wrote me and said those things, it's a perfect example where, yes, jiu-jitsu is good for self-defense. Jiu-jitsu is good for fighting. Jiu-jitsu is good if you're a police officer, which we'll get into that next. But it's also good just to clear your mind, reset, allow you to focus on something outside of your problems. And have a tribe. Have a tribe of people around something. you. And you go there and you endure and you grind with a group of like-minded people. And not even necessarily, some are very different minded people, but you're, you have a common objective. You have a common goal that you're doing together. And that is what makes people feel like, oh, things are go like, this makes me feel like I have a sense of accomplishment. Oh, okay. This makes me feel like I have a tribe of people around me. There's a, I mean, that guy, she said, what she say? He's been doing a couple weeks yeah. now and it's a, it's night and day difference. It's not because he has good jujitsu now. It's because he's found that outlet. Yeah. If you don't have that outlet and you're going through anxiety or depression, you need to find that outlet. I think and it's big, weird that most people don't want to talk about this. No, no. Well, I think a big part of it too is, you know, um, I think, you know, as, as humans, we're tribal by nature, right? You know, how do we, how do we come up, you know, hundred thousands of years ago, we lived in a small village, right? And we had our village and all the huts and houses and whatnot were all close together. And you saw your neighbors every day and you interacted with them. Uh, and you went out on a hunt together with the men or you foraged for berries or the women, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you had human interaction. And when the rival clan came over the hill, you fucking it's on. spiked them in the skull and we drank stand, their blood We stand shoulder fucking, to shoulder right. and we fight to the fucking death. That's right. But nowadays in this, in this environment, in this society, um, you get up in the morning, you get in your car, you go through the drive through at whatever coffee shop. You don't interact with people. Um, you go to your office, you sit in your cubicle behind your computer, you get back in your car, you go back through another drive through for lunch or whatever. And you don't, you don't interact with people. You lose that. You lose that sense of belonging in that tribe. And I think that's the biggest thing. He lost his team, i.e. Yeah. wrestling and yep. his, his people. And you don't gain it back unless you get something like this. My biggest issues when I stopped working overseas and stopped working as a contractor for the military and stuff was I didn't have my team. You didn't anymore. have the guys. I was dad. I was husband. That was it. And and that's the thing that like I think a lot of people don't realize is the title of dad and the title of husband are fucking awesome. Absolutely. Right. But that 
doesn't complete everything that you need as a person. Right. The you saying know? it takes a village yeah. is for a fucking reason. We talked about this last night where, you know, my son, we're, we're hanging out, three fucking meat eaters with cauliflower here. We're hanging out and my son is going around the room giving us back rubs and neck massages yeah. and stuff, working all the kinks out. And my little girl's coming in and showing you guys. And I said that, I was yeah, like, man, a- how awesome is it that, you know, my little girl identifies you guys as like, you know, part of her community, part of her yeah. tribe. She identifies you guys as, you know, alpha males within our community. And that's important to me that it's not just dad. It's other men that are positive role models, you know? And then she told, she told me a really important story. <laughs> she said, Hey, Mr. Greg, do you know about two years ago, my brother, he picked up a pencil and then he threw it on the ground. <laughs> and you're like, where? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fucking awesome, yep. dude. No, but that's, I mean, it's exactly right. And uh, watching what jujitsu has done for literally every single person that I know that has given it a legitimate try. Right. You know, don't be the person that comes to practice two times and then gets your butt hurt because a uh, younger female strangled you and you don't come back, you're not getting the benefits of jiu-jitsu. Shit, that sold me on it. I was like, that's never happening again. I was a white belt and a purple belt blonde chick freaking choked the fuck out of me. I was like, mm, yeah, I'm not letting that happen again. <laughs> yeah, as a as a strong athletic right. man. No is a woman going to fucking choke me <laughs> unconscious, you know? I don't think, I might get some hate for this, but I think I'm at the level now where no no jujitsu female athlete could beat me. <laughs> yeah. Jocko's talked about it. Yeah. He said he goes, I'm not gonna say any names, but I went against a black belt world champion and he's like, This might get this uh, what kind of roles come in my way? Right. You know? And then he's like, I did whatever I wanted to her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. No, there's but, there's one. Oh yeah. I can think of one, but <laughs> in her she's name. bigger than both of us. <laughs> and her name starts with Gabby and ends with Garcia. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she's got bigger traps and fucking quads did, and hey, you, than she, I just, do. she just called out Gordon Ryan. I heard. I know. They're having a little spat back and forth on fucking Instagram. Are they really? Too. Oh dude, is so I saw, she called him like some fag boy or something on Instagram and it's like it's pretty funny. Uh, I'll tell you what, I already know the outcome of that fight. Yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred out of a hundred times. Oh, yeah. But I'd still watch it. I'd watch it in a heartbeat. I'd pay to watch it. Yeah. If it was on like flow grappling. Yeah. hundred percent pay to watch it. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's the, the prodigy man. So we went to, like I said at the beginning, you're still an active duty deputy. Yep. And is that, or is you considered a reserve? Uh, technically I'm a, I'm technically a reserve, Okay, but I'm assigned, I've got a, you know, I'm a full-time commissioned officer because I was full-time law enforcement before you made the transition yeah. to the, okay. Yeah. And so you're also part of the training cadre at the local, what do you, what do you call your training center here? A training center. Okay. Yeah, our training center for the, for the sheriff's office. And, uh, we went there today and I helped out, which was, was actually awesome. cool. It was super cool. And I, I, dude, I love that. Like mentoring is something that's just fun, but the other side of it is it's kind of disheartening to see the the type of people that want to go into that profession. Law enforcement now. And, and if anybody that is attending that academy, I'm not saying this like disparagingly or trying to tear you down, but facts are facts. We were trying to teach them jujitsu and I'm not exaggerating when I say 50% of the class was gassed yep. three minutes into drill, at three minutes at into drilling. Up. Yeah. And it's like, I loved what you said to him. You're like, everybody stop. Look at me. Listen, is there anybody here that found out they were going to be a police officer yesterday? And it's like, everybody there knew for months, for months. And they all showed up. Most of them Unprepared. overweight and out of shape. Yep. And hopefully, I mean, if, if, if three people in that group listened to the words that were coming out of your mouth and they become a better version of themselves, yeah. then today was worth it. A hundred percent. But you pulled no punches. No. You're like, listen, half the people in this room are overweight. Half the people in this room are 
completely out of shape. Half the people in this room did zero preparation for where you're standing right now. Right. And it's unfucking set. It's unset. Look, I've told you this before, and you know, a lot of you, you know, I think we've talked about it on the podcast as well, is I am one of the strongest supporters of law enforcement, but I am also the harshest critic. And like I said to those kids today, I have extremely high standards for myself. Mm-hmm. And I I push those standards on my friends. And I push those standards on law enforcement officers. I told him today, no one called them up and said, oh, please come be a law enforcement officer. We really want you to come. No one fucking called you and said that, (laughs) right? You volunteered for it. So if you're not willing to put in the extra work because someone's life one day is going to be on the line of whether you can or cannot do your job to the highest fucking level, if you're not willing to put in that work, go sell cars for a living. And And there's nothing wrong with that. And the, the, the statement that everybody always says is like, it's not, it's not if, it's when. I don't like that statement in regards to law enforcement because that suggests sometimes, at some point, it's going to happen. No. You're going to be in a scenario on a regular basis yep. where you have to help people and you have to be capable. Yes. And what's bizarre is everybody's, I mean, fucking cops has been airing since I was like five years old. Right. Bad Everybody boys, knows, bad boys. What you gonna do? <laughs> Everybody knows what the job entails. Everybody knows you're gonna be fighting people sometimes. You're gonna be chasing people sometimes. But again, it people goes are back going to, to be people, trying to hurt you. It sometimes. goes back to people overestimating their ability to fight and control another human. You think that's what it is? I think a lot of that is is that oh, I can do that. Oh, I can. I'll, I'll be able to handle myself. I just learned handcuffing. I just did an hour of handcuffing defensive tactics in the in the academy. Psh, I got this. I just did PPC. I don't know. T- I'm trying know. to think about what it is because I think that's part of it. So what do it's crazy the fucking how different salaries are for police officers throughout the country. But I know up in Seattle, you can make 120,000 easy. Your Where first do they start your at? first couple years. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, year okay. 2. At the port, you could easily make 120. Here, less than half. Less that. than half. Less than half that. Well, so I used to wonder up in Seattle, like, is the fact that you can make a fucking six figure income and have great benefits attracting the wrong people? And I hate I hate to say that because I do think like it should be a, pr- a profession that you can be compensated well for Absolutely. and you can raise a family on. Like I have buddies that were uh, like firefighters, a buddy who was a firefighter in Florida making 30 something a year, yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. So he's like, fuck this. He moved to Portland. Now he's making over hundred K yeah. same job. And it's like cost of living. Isn't that much. Di- it's different, but it's not that right. different. I'm sure it depends on where you live too. So I was, I was wondering like, is a good salary attracting the wrong people? I don't know. And I would almost say the opposite. You know, I, I think the better the salary, maybe the higher level candidates you're getting, you know, guys with, you know, maybe a higher level education, a higher work ethic, et cetera. Well, I think they could employ that if hiring, culture. if yeah. hiring actually made it that requirement a difficult a, a difficult yes. not necessarily a selection but i don't know i like that word dude i do like that word too i've actually always said that because at least in washington state when you get hired you're an employee now and when you go to the police academy you are an employee and you have to get fired it's i think i think yes you should get paid while you're at the academy of course because nobody can take six months off of pay they have fucking kids and mortgages but i think it should be understood you're not going to get a job offer until you graduate yeah or or, successfully pass yeah or say yeah exactly your job is contingent on you successfully passing and if you don't hey it's no hard feelings but you're probably not cut out for it right but i guess my theory of of a decent salary attracting the wrong people is kind of put to shit because we're down here. You said they're making 60 a year. Oh, dude, I think uh, you get hired. It's about 45, 48. How can you even fucking support yourself? Uh, 
They like you could. And when I got hired by the feds, it was in the forties. Yeah. So I know what yeah. I know what it's like, and yeah. I could barely support myself. Yeah. And if I had to do it over again, I don't think I could. Yeah. You know. I you know for me when we go back and forth on this, but I think it's a cultural thing. I think the culture of law enforcement has degraded over the years, whereas I think you know a long time ago people became law enforcement officers to be crime fighters. So what kind of people are attracted to that, right? Yeah. Kind of rougher, rough and tumble people with a um, a personality to really defend the weak, defend those that can't defend themselves, right? Yeah. And I'm going to go hunt down the predators to protect the prey. And I think that's been watered out, not just of law enforcement, but out of our society, Mm -hmm. And now it's like, well, I'm going to become a cop and I'm going to sit in a patrol unit and write a report or two and then write some speeding tickets, which I know that's on our notes Ugh. as well that you <laughs> And it fucking aggravates the fuck out of me. What do you think the best way to enforce speeding laws oh, should be? Know. Oh, you know. Let's hear it, dude. So they don't know. I disagree with speeding tickets. I think modern day vehicles, modern day roadways allow for a very high rate of speed to be performed in a safe manner given the traffic conditions, right? So mm -hmm. we talked about the Autobahn a little bit today. Yeah. So reckless driving or reckless endangerment should be the standard, right? Yep. Because you could be going only five miles an hour above the speed limit. Say you could be doing 75 in a 70, but high traffic swerving in and out of cars, dropping tires across the white line, rumble strips, and swerving it out and be fucking and reckless endangering and endangering people. Yeah. people, which should be the standard for getting pulled over. Endangerment of the public. Yep. Um, but like I had a student trying to get here for morning class one morning, 5 a.m., 5.15 in the morning on the interstate. No cars are out. And she was doing like 83 in a 70. She drives a decent car. It's well-maintained. 83 in a 70. She got pulled over and got a speeding ticket. There were no other fucking cars on the road. Yeah. But it's a stat. It's fucking revenue. It's revenue. And that's what it boils down to. Yeah. And why were traffic laws created in their inception? Public safety. Public safety. safety. Yeah. yeah. Public, public safety. safety. Not padding the fucking pockets of the government. And, and that's taken over. It's taken over. Like where they fucking sit there and hide around corners. Oh, yeah. And and dude, in Lake Stevens, where I live, there's a portion, it's called Highway 204, where it changes from 55 to 35. Oh, that fucking drives me crazy. And bro, they Washington, sit right there. At Washington the State Patrol trench. sits right yeah. where it changes oh, yeah. Yeah. and hammers people all day. Yeah, yeah. And to any and I think anybody that is listening to the show knows, just like you said. I'm a supporter of law enforcement, but I'm the first to criticize the fuck out of them. Yep. I can tell you the majority of people, one of the main reasons they have disdain for the profession is because that's their only interaction with them. Right. Oh, yeah, fucking cops. Yeah, I got fucking pulled over and got a ticket for $110 for what? Well, I can tell you because my buddy Tyler Stanaway, who's been on the show a couple times. Yeah. What's up, Tyler? What up, dude? He got pulled over. Last week on I-5 by Washington State Patrol, 65 and a 60. 65 and a 60. That's criminal. It is fucking criminal. That's criminal. And, 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 and this is what I want to, this is the point that I want to make to all police officers. Because I was a police officer for pushing a decade. When I got off shift, guess how fast I drove on my way home? At least 65. 80. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 80 miles an hour. I speed, I mean, you said to me the other day, I speed all over the place. Yeah. So... And every cop I know drives 80 miles an hour home yeah. because guess what? If we get pulled over, oh, oh, bro. Oh, you're a cop. What's it's up, bro? Like, hey, man, it's all good. Yeah. Dude, how, what's it over? What's it like over at your department? Blah, 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 like shoot the shit and it's cool, right? right. No, it's not fucking cool yeah. to target citizens for five miles an hour to fucking pad the pockets right. of the local municipality. Full stat. Yeah. That's the quickest way. I mean, dude, the fucking public's relationship with the profession 
is pretty fucking tarnished as it's is. Horrible. So there, there's a lot of reasons. A lot of it, there's not even. I think a lot of the reasons that are being pushed are narratives, and there's no validity behind them. Yeah. But course. regardless, that's the current state that we're living in. The fastest way to continue to piss people off is pull them over for sixty-five and a sixty. And this is how I look at it, man. Like Tyler's a hardworking guy. He's a metal fabricator. Work has been tough right now because of COVID. Right. And he's been on a hiatus. He's been fu- on a furlough, rather. And he doesn't have a ton of money to go doesn't, pay a yeah, fucking speed ticket. He has ticket. three little kids he's trying to feed. And now you want to take a couple hundred dollars out from right. me when I have fucking children to feed right. and give it to the city for five fucking miles an hour when, over. Tell me, who was he endangering? Yeah. Well, who? well, here's the fucked up thing. This is the fucked up thing. And I, maybe I'll get that officer's name <laughs> and fucking put him on blast. He was on I-5 and he said he was behind Washington State Patrol and they were going 72, 73, right? And he's like, all right, this is the flow of traffic and a police officer is leading. It. It's right. all good because who doesn't go 10 over on the fucking right. freeway, right. right? So he's like, cool. And they went like that for a while. And he said, all of a sudden, the dude pulled to the left dropped, braked, dropped right behind him and pulled him over. That makes it even worse. Way fucking worse. Because it's like, okay, were you running code somewhere? Right. Why were you speeding? Why were you speeding? And that's what I told him. I said, Tyler, take this fucking ticket to court Yeah. and tell the judge. And I mean, I don't know if he has like any way of proving this, but you could just tell the guy, be like, hey, you're on the fucking, you know what? You're in court. Yeah, well, fucking, if the trooper wants to show up to court to dispute it, he's going to have to give his, uh, you know, he's going to have to talk about the circumstances of how he pulled him over. And explain why you were going 73 for five or six miles. Right. And, and I'll tell you exactly why. Ego. 100%. Well, I can go 73 because I'm a trooper. Right. But you can't. Why is he going 73 behind why me? Why is he pacing me? Why is he pacing me? Why is he going, just because I'm going 10 over, why is he going 10 over? Watch this. And if you if you're a fucking police officer that does this, you should be fucking Shame beaten. on you. You should be fucking beaten, yeah. dude. Cuz you don't know these people's circumstances and you're going to take that opportunity to steal money from someone. Yep. It gets me fired up, dude, yeah. as you can tell. It's and it bullshit. might be that I'm a glass of Jameson in and I'm starting to feel it. So yeah. my boy my boy doesn't handle his whiskey too well. <laughs> no, I don't. I just, dude, I'm the first to admit I drink one time a month. So a couple more glasses, we're gonna be fighting yeah. on that one. If you're watching, I don't think we've mentioned it, but I can't fight tonight, dude. I Looking. can't fight. I'm not fighting. I'm just kidding. I'm not that guy. But uh we're in his jujitsu academy. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so the mat room's right behind us. Yeah. If it gets, if it gets too out if of it control. It gets crazy. But are there, you always hear about quotas. Is that a real thing? I don't or, know. I mean, I My never, department never did not have quotas. Yeah, I never, you know, I had rank when I was a full-time law enforcement. And let me clarify for anyone out there. And we talked about, I spent very, very little time when I was a rookie as a patrol officer. And one of the things that got me in trouble was my rank told me to take the fucking radar gun one day and go shoot radar. And I said, no. Uh, I said, no. Uh, no, you need I, to go, you need to go never, shoot some radar. I've never shot radar. Oh, me neither. I would, I'd get fired before oh, yeah. I shoot radar. And I said, no. I said, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I never, I've never written a speeding ticket in my entire career. <laughs> I'm not doing it. That makes two of us. And uh, I, I wrote yeah. a couple tickets on FTO for like you gotta, burned out taillight. You got to hit those hey, widgets. Hey, go ahead and make this stop and write this ticket so I can observe you. Bro, this haunts me. Oh, yeah. I'm I've written, so I've written a couple of traffic violations on I, targets that I was watching and or following uh-huh. because I had, they were a target of my investigation. Right. So I'm tracking them and I'm following them in a vehicle. And uh, if they violated a traffic law, I had to use that traffic law basically as PC to go do the stop 
and investigate knowing that they were carrying XYZ in their vehicle or had an informant that said, hey, he's moving a ton of weight or he's moving stolen guns, et cetera, et cetera. See, and, and that's the only time that I've written any sort of traffic violations because I needed to write that traffic violation to legalize the stop so I could finish my investigation and seize the stolen guns or the narcotics he was moving, et cetera. See, down in New Orleans, New Orleans. that stuff's still acceptable. Washington State, that would be a no-go. Because if, if you're, they would argue, if you're investigating this guy for something unrelated, then you're basically looking for something. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, I am. But we all know if you look for something hard enough, you can find it, right? right? So that's where And that, the traffic stop leads to us. You know, I mean, we're not like using the traffic stop and then be like, oh, we need to look in your trunk. You know, like. Let me ask you this question yeah. because, so I did a question and answer podcast a couple episodes ago. I listened to it. And one of the questions- I'm his biggest fan. One of the questions that got submitted that I didn't get to, I saw it after the fact, was as a police officer making traffic stops, the odor of marijuana was one of my biggest tools to then continue an investigation into major drug busts where I was actually looking for heroin and methamphetamine. Or that's what the investigation would lead to, right? And he goes, now that marijuana is being legalized everywhere and you can no longer use that, there is basically he's having a harder time removing heroin and meth off the streets. I'd call bullshit. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't call it bullshit because how many times have you heard cops smell marijuana and then use that as the nexus to then course, check nexus, the, yeah. search the vehicle. And my response would be, well, I'm from Washington state where not only if you can smell marijuana, you could see marijuana, you could see heroin. You need a search warrant to go into that car no matter what. Yeah. So, I mean, I never lived that life, but the other side of it is, is I'm actually pro marijuana. Like, I don't give a fuck what people put into their bodies as long as it's not affecting me right. to the point where as a, as like a, as I lean more libertarian than anything, yep. if you want to go into your house and shoot yourself up with methamphetamine to the point where it kills you, have at it, have at it, but don't go steal your neighbor's shit. The second, you, need to go buy the second you steal yep. downriggers off my boat because you're a meth addict, yep. like what happened six months ago, yep. I think you should be fucking executed. Right. You know, like I shouldn't have to deal with your addiction problem. You're projecting your addiction problems onto me. And that's where I have a fucking problem Speaking with it. Which theft, bro. Theft. Fucking nothing pisses me off more than theft. Someone, and this is actually because a lot of like the riots and shit that occurred over the last several months. Oh, well, they're only stealing. They're only doing damage to material items and blah, blah, blah. Well, those, dude, those stores have insurance. So it's no big deal. Yeah. Bullshit. Right? No, they got insurance. That I've shit will be, bro. That shit will be replaced. Yeah, What's the big deal? Exactly. I've had shit stolen from me before. I swear to God, if I caught the motherfucker that stole shit from me, he'd be dead. Fucking execution. Our hands fucking chopped off, uh, like bro. they fucking do in the Middle East. <laughs> and I'm bro. all for it. You fucking steal shit. Boom. Done. So you trying to take my shit <laughs> that I fucking paid my hard earned money for? Fucking done. For anyone that didn't catch my sarcasm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's being sarcastic about the <laughs> yeah, insurance and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Because there's, it's funny because I've had, I've had that argument with friends before that are like, nobody's life is worth a material item. And it's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm not saying your life is worth the value of a pair of Nike tennis shoes. But what I am saying is when you try and victimize someone and you expect other people to bow down and accept victimization, you can fuck yourself. Oh yeah. Like I, I, I've, I've told my wife, if we were walking out of a fucking, a bar or a club in Seattle and some guy in an alley says, give me your wallet. I don't care if there's $5 in my wallet. Oh yeah. It's, all. it's to the fucking death. Yep. And you're going to die yep. for $5. Yeah. And it's because but I mean, fuck, this could be a whole you're podcast not fucking in taking itself. my shit from me. No, you're not doing it. You're not doing it. 
And we talked about it when the fucking go ahead, keep going. No, principle alone. Like, principle like alone. One fucking dollar. I'll <laughs> die. I'll die for one dollar. Because here's there's two sides. A, I'm not gonna perpetuate criminal fucking behavior. Right. These cocksuckers need to be confronted with violence. Oh, you want to victimize yeah, people? They, you want to project to these You want to project violence on my community? I'm gonna show you what real fucking right. violence is. Right. Right. That's fucking one side of it. We abs and that's going to, if more people would take that approach, less people would be fucking victims. Oh, hundred percent. You know, it's, it's people would be less assholes if people got punched in the mouth more. Yes. If there were consequences, like, you know, there needs to be consequences and consequences need to be followed through on. And, and when all the fucking riots and all that shit were happening, there were some rumors that there's, cause we live in a fairly affluent area. Um, it's a, it's a blue collar sort of area, but like an affluent blue collar area, mm -hmm. you know, um, people that have worked hard and worked their way up and it's a primarily white area. And we heard some rumors that there were going to be some, uh, protests coming down here. Right. Peaceful uh, protests. Yeah. Peaceful protests. Roger that. I made sure my family was good to go. And I went out and trued my LaRue OBR 308 and jammed a bunch of mags. Because I got real some really nice cover and concealment on the fucking rooftop of my academy. And no one's fucking coming here and taking this no, from me. To the this death. is this is my fucking home. And I got a fucking hundred and fifty meters of fucking dead space and beaten zone. Mm -hmm. And guarantee you, fucking the hordes start coming here to fucking throw shit through my window and burn my place down. They're dead. Bro, there's gonna be a stack of bodies they gotta climb over first. Yeah. Well in so Ivan Salaveri, who and is, I know he'd probably be there with me because yeah. he's like, yeah, fucking Roger. <laughs> Ivan Salaveri, put down the camera, Luke, and fucking shoot. <laughs> who was on my podcast last week? <laughs> that was his thing, and he's like, he's downtown Seattle. Oh yeah, and he was in. There was protests going by his academy. Yeah, and he's like, I was inside with my rifle, and that was. That was his line in that the was sand. His fucking album. He's like, if they want to walk around outside and shout and cool. throw rocks and fuck around, they All can right. do whatever they want. But as soon as rocks start coming through my yeah. window, it's to the death, yeah. dude. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's not just the fact that we need to fucking stop this shit in its tracks. But if I got mugged and I just accepted it, it was only, dude, I only had 20 bucks in my pocket. That it's empowers not, them yeah. to go do that to other people. Yeah. But then it also disempowers you. Yeah. You're a fucking pussy. Yeah. You, like, my wife would divorce me. She's like, I thought I married a fucking army ranger. Right. You handed that guy $20? Right. Like, what? God, dude. <laughs> but that's what the thing is. That's that's the whole argument. It has nothing to do with the value with the of monetary the item. value of the item or the window that got broken right. or the Nike shoes that got fucking looted out of the store. It's a mentality of being a winner. Right. And if you let someone victimize you, they're the winner. Well, I think that's the problem too, is a lot of it. Like, uh, it comes down to like, um, big corporate chain stores and stuff getting looted target, Walmart, et cetera. There's no human, there's no human value yeah there's no blood sweat and tears yeah. there's no i fucking built the wood sprung floor yeah, you know, yeah. There's, with, there's, with my team you can't and attach I an individual this. right it's it. like eh, it's a big giant corporation they have thousands and thousands of items and they got good insurance all right cool whatever just let them go in and take uh-uh not fucking like yeah. your gym my gym a lot of those stores that were mom and pop stores you know um we fucking worked for this and I don't, you know, I'm not fucking Walmart. And and here's another little fucking little tidbit of information. Where do you think insurance gets their money to of pay course. things out? Of course. We pay premiums. We pay premiums. And those premiums and when fucked fucking up things up. happen, right. the premiums go right. up. Right now our insurance is more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so like, oh no, it's insurance. No, it's you, motherfucker. Right. It's you, dummy. Right. Like Shout out Mitch Aguiar. Fuck yeah. We, we had the Mitch show on at Lappin's last house night, last night. We were night. watching it until like midnight. <laughs> Fucking cracking he, up. Dude, I love Mitch because he goes live and just argues with random fucking yeah. people he dude. fucking cracks his little <laughs> welcome to the, to the Mitch, Mitch show, show. <laughs> <laughs> but he fucking that's what that guy was arguing with him it's, the insurance will pay for it man Yeah. like where does that mentality come from 
I don't even fucking know, dude. Again, there's no, you know, fucking people get up and they fucking get on their phones. There's no human interaction. Uh, they go drive through their Starbucks, their fucking drive through. There's no human interaction. I like Starbucks. I know you like Starbucks. I know like everyone fucking, thinks I'm a commie I fucking fuck. fucking hate Starbucks. But I like, you know, I'll, okay. Fuck when Black guys. Rifle Coffee opens a store in Seattle, I will become exclusive. I want to open up a fucking Black Rifle Coffee in Mandeville, Louisiana, Evan Hafer. You hear that, Evan? Let's do it. Fuck. But, uh, yeah. Should I'll, I go dig out the Black Rifle coffee that I have under my Keurig? And I know Keurig, you can fucking, it's not a pour over, blah, 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 blah. But I have Black Rifle coffee here. And I give it to my members. Well, I'm wearing a Black Rifle shirt. You are. So that's the first step to opening a, a chain down here. A word from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, going back. Yes, let's to go back. To the, uh, the profession of law enforcement. Let's go straight back. Anyone that's in the Seattle area may have heard about Sheriff Fortney. And I know I talked you to you about it this with me, a yeah. little bit over dinner, but I actually want to have him on the show and I, I've been in communication with him and he seems open to the idea, but he had some legal battles that he had to, to squash first. And I just read today that it sounds like he won, but Sheriff Fortney is a local sheriff to Seattle. And this should have been a fucking international or national story. Right. Just like mine fucking blew up, he was very similar, and he publicly wrote a letter, an open letter to the governor of Washington, Jay Inslee, who's a fucking bitch, and said, me, n neither me nor my deputies will be used to enforce any COVID mandates, any business closures, or any mask mandates. And the radical left went fucking nuts and just attacked this guy. And... uh so they, they, they fucking move forward with a recall. We have to recall the sheriff. He, he's he's going to create a super spreader event. We have to recall him. Dude, that, that flyer that you showed me today. That yeah, they it's like did a is zombie fucking, on it, yeah, dude. dude. So talk are, about rhetoric. Yes. Talk about fucking decisiveness, divisiveness, you know? Fucking bullshit. So people are fucking pushing flyers around my hometown saying, like, he's going to... It's going to be... It's got uh, a picture of like a zombie it's on a first zombie, like, dude. Well, COVID turns us into zombies now? <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> but he fucking stood up against COVID. And if you stand up against the narrative... Well, that's he stood up against the, the, the popular political line. I was going to say, not the... Yeah, not the, the popular political line. Right, right. Like, I don't think... And I shouldn't say, like, I don't know what the percentages are because there are a bunch of dumb motherfuckers that are still eating up the COVID shit oh, yeah. hook, line, and sinker. Oh, yeah. And the fucking new, the more fucks are being dropped, uh, the more whiskey I, I know. Drink. Were we supposed to not cuss or cuss more? I couldn't fucking remember when you're like. No, I no. So, okay. So the, the, the discussion was to monetize YouTube, they want to. The fucks to a limited there, number. There's a certain amount of fucks you can have. All right. But I'm not going to stop my fucks. No, I think we fucking blew that so, one out the wall. So if YouTube doesn't want to monetize the show, they can fuck themselves. Bam. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't have guns on you. Yeah, Luke's the one that told me that. You can't have, if, you're, if your station is monetized, only live. You can't handle gun blocks. You can't handle live guns? Fuck you, YouTube. What about yeah. Why can guns? you not have a gun on a live? <laughs> Why? Think about that, though. That's such a, I mean, I know I'm the crazy one. People used to call me Crazy Anderson. That yeah. was my nickname. But think about what that means. Big tech tells you, you cannot handle a gun if you're airing something on our platform. You can't have a gun. I mean, what's with all what's, the, the, the what's wrong with a fucking gun? Yeah, what's with all the gun videos that are on there? How do they? Because he says it's live. Um, if it's live YouTube, it's live. But if it's like recorded television, totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Because that's a big difference. I mean, that definitely sets the difference. Yeah, because we're not live. But think about that, dude. It's stupid. Everybody, this whole anti-gun movement that big tech is pushing. And dude, do you remember like when emojis became a thing? I don't. But yeah, you do too, dude. I mean, I don't remember the specific date, but like, well, <laughs> no, I'm pretty but, far back on like. But tech, there was man. a time when 
Well, first of all, there was a time before we before cell phones even existed. I still have to remember hitting the f- number one three times for C, and then one time for <laughs> That's A. That's what I'm saying. And then going so, down to the five so and hitting it three times for L. The progression of <laughs> right. of fucking technology oh, yeah. to where now every single fucking text can have a a sailboat or a fucking axe right. or a person repelling yeah, yeah, yeah. or a person in a wheelchair yeah, and exactly. it's on and on and on. I like the turd emoji, the smiley face. <laughs> yeah. There used to be a gun emoji. Yes. And they made it a fucking green squirt gun. Squirt gun. They made it a squirt gun. I know. What is that? But you can still have a bomb. There's still bomb emojis. Like. And there's still knife guns emojis. Guns are so like, huh, it's so bad that you can't have a gun emoji. What are the stats of people that are killed with edged weapons, i.e. kitchen knives and fucking screwdrivers versus firearms in the U.S. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. I'd love to know, but I bet you it's a fucking lot. What I do know is more people are killed by getting punched in the face in America annually than by rifles. So Rifles. Every fucking text that I send usually has a fist bump at the end of it. They should Uh fucking ban that emoji then. That's right. They should. Because <laughs> I'm fucking punching you. I'm killing you with my fist. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, uh, and, we and live and in every such text a f- message is going to end with Are a Are you mon- looking it up? With a monkey Let me sound. See. Oh, what's this? Saying? All right. Does, is this stats? Number. Dude, Luke is like young Jamie. Dude. dude <laughs> <laughs> fucking Luke is our stud, bro. Number of murder victims in the United States in 2019 by weapon used. Okay, handguns, number of murder victims, 6,368. And is that the top one? That is the top one. Okay, which okay. I would expect that. Right, handguns. Because every gangbanging piece of shit has some right. garbage. Fucking high point or fucking bursa or yeah. a little fucking wheel gun. Yeah, and, and suicides. suicides. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, firearms type not stated, 3,281. Now, is that of the 6,000? We don't really know. Knives or cutting instruments, 1,476. Other weapons, 840. Personal weapons, hands, fists, feet, 600. Blunt objects, clubs, hammers, etc. 397. Okay, so one, six. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven down. Seven down rifles. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. 364 people were killed last year with rifles. By a rifle. By a rifle. You had people. And that includes suicides. Yeah, How exactly. many people are in this fucking country? What, 350 million? Yeah. That's exactly Easy. right, dude. You have more people beaten to death with fists, bricks, like the blunt objects and the fist in combination are yeah. what, 900? Because it, was, it wasn't it 600 and uh, 300? Almost 1,000. Almost 1,000. Almost 1,000. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's 997. It's three times as many as rifles and the fucking radical left wants to take your rifles. Yeah. People are beaten more with fucking hammers than they're killed with rifles. They're killed with rifles. And that's not fucking, that's not fucking, he's a radical right wing, like, no motherfucker. Right. That's the FBI crime yeah. statistics. Yep. So why are they coming after rifles? Dude, because they're bad, bro. They're bad. They're bad. And like, they kill people, didn't you know that? They come to life and they pop, 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 pop. But the fucking, fucking thing people. is, dude, and... I get pulled more and more down these fucking like thinking that our government is moving forward with fucking nefarious agendas. If 300 people a year are killed with rifles, why is the Biden administration focused on that? On rifles? Why was that big part of their fucking platform? So their campaign. There, could be, there could be two reasons why they're doing this. One did they think that, that making that stand against rifles would garnish votes? Yes. So is that what it is? I'd do say they, that's partly. Or do they literally have a, a master plan to disarm America? I think not or, specifically personally Biden and Harris, but I think that is also be, I think well, that is also part of the plan of portion of our, our of our political parties. Biden, let me be clear. When I say Biden's plan, He's I mean puppet. his fucking puppet master's yeah, yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah. And bro, I mean, we were, fuck, we were watching Biden speeches in your house last night. And not from the campaign trail, not from inauguration, no, now, currently. literally things that he was discussing yeah. this week. Yeah, currently. And he can't even, like, 
formulate a, a complete thought. And I honestly think that it's getting worse. Almost, it's getting worse exponentially. Yes. And I've talked about it on the show before. Uh, my father died of dementia. I'm intimately familiar with that disease yeah. and the cognitive decline and watching how it progresses. Right. For, if anyone doesn't think that that's what's going on, they haven't lived through it. You they haven't my, lived through it. You know it. my theory. Let's hear it. My theory is six months. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be in office for six months. Although maybe, maybe some of you out there know this, but apparently... Someone told me that there's a, there's some law statute rule that if within a certain time after an election, the president has to step down or is deemed unfit, then it goes back to another election. I don't know how true that is. I, I don't know. I'm not a smart man. But I, someone had told me that You want to check that out, case, Jamie? I mean, Luke? <laughs> that that's the case that it goes temporarily back to the former administration in a new uh that might be fucking election. wishful thinking that might i mean my gut reaction and i'm not familiar with that yeah, i don't know so i just have to listen to that and guess because that's the purpose of a vice president yeah, that's a per that's the purpose happens that's to the purpose the, of a the, vice the president. president if we the voted vice this president. vice president right. into power you would i would assume that person would take power i would assume so maybe as well. that is wishful thinking on Looks like it goes to the running mate. Yeah. What that's, do you mean? That's what, do you, what wait, I would have thought. Okay, yeah. It goes I would to, assume drops that. down to the vice. And that's yeah, what yeah. I thought as well. Because I said, I give it six months. Six months, he's going to uh, either voluntarily step down or be deemed unfit. And Harris is going to be president. Yeah. That's my prediction. And I'm not going to take you up on that bet. Fuck no. But my whole purpose of bringing that up with the gun stuff is that I have worked high level like protection details right. within the US government as of you. Right. Yep. Biden has been surrounded by AR 15s oh, yeah. and more. And more yeah. since what is 1970? He's got fucking miniguns around him now. Yeah. He's got fucking Dylan miniguns. Yeah. Dude, think about that. That's where we've arrived, where you got this cocksucker in office, and I've read some of his stuff on the show before, so I'm not going to hash it all out again. Right. But he straight said, like, I'm going to take weapons of war oh, off the street. Fucking 30-round magazines. 30-round magazines off the one. street. Hey, just I want to go on record. You know, I've got a fucking moving box of 30 round. full of 30-round magazines, and I got a fucking stack of them loaded, brah, 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 like fucking $100 bills. So come on. Hey, I've said the same thing. I told my wife, I said, the if you think of the frog in the pot analogy, yep. they just start turning up the heat, right? Yep. And so, hey, it's just a 30-round magazine. You can still have, you can still have 20 rounds. Yeah. Even though this fucking government sent me all over planet Earth. Right, with 30-round magazines. And expected me to kill other human beings yep. with 30-round magazines, they were, they're a very good platform when I, when they're being utilized on the government's behalf, oh, of course, yeah. all over the fucking planet, but when it's on the behalf of protecting my three daughters, right. nah, I don't, don't think you don't need. Who needs thirty yeah, rounds for protecting need, their you family? You don't need thirty rounds for protecting your family, right. but Biden's family needs thirty rounds. Oh yeah, bro, he's Fuck got you, fucking. Dude. He's got fucking suburbans in his motorcade. They're level seven with fucking Dylan Dylan fucking miniguns in them. Yeah, that's part of the cat team. You know, part of fucking Secret Service cat team. Is the in cat team? Counter assault team. Counter assault team. Yeah, sorry. Don't get caught up in assault team. Don't get caught up in acronyms. In acronyms. But think about that. That's a that, for me. That's a huge fucking deal. You want to demonize weapons. You want to you want to act like people that like shooting and people that like guns. Like there's something wrong with them. Yet you're completely surrounded by guns. Right. How can anyone look at that and fucking make sense of that it's funny man you know you look at you know we can really only look at what we know right so you and i for example we're the, we're the guys talking right now right we're the guys fucking getting all amped up and doing this on a daily basis we fucking hug and embrace more people than we do fucking hurt uh, absolutely you know yeah of and course i'm the last person I don't want to fucking 
hurt people. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want... I but, kind of want to hurt people. Well, sometimes I do. No, and I'm I not even saying that like... <laughs> sometimes. All right. Well, maybe I'm being a little... <laughs> fucking, sometimes I do. There's, uh, again, it, it's, it goes back to like we said about the person mugging you. Yeah. Like, I look forward to hurting people that deserve to be hurt. Of course. And, I, you know, yeah. But with that Agreed. said, I know what you're saying is that we, we don't go out and look for it. No. We don't fucking But if you're a predator... Yeah, yeah. But you know? we don't instigate problems. We do the opposite. I mean, we fucking teach six-year-olds jujitsu. Yeah. You know, we help people with their fitness. Yeah. We're dads. Yeah. We drive our daughters to school. Right. And that's what I mean. You and, know, people and, and with guess differing what? beliefs or different opinions or political affiliations. I've got no ill will or yeah. anger towards you at all. Well, no, that's the big. That's one of the biggest fucking problems that the left is shoving down everybody's throat. Is that if you're on the right. You're the part of the KKK. Right. You're a fucking sexist. You don't... So, dude, who do you know that's on the right that doesn't have black friends? That doesn't have gay friends? That You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's such a stupid fucking narrative. I just care if you're a good person or not. Yeah, Are you a fucking good person? That's what every... All of my friends, that's their standard. Right. Are you a cool motherfucker? Right. Do you have my best interests in mind? Do right. I have your best interests in mind? Building your tribe, those are the things that we're looking for. Right. Not who you fuck, not the color of your skin, right. not if you like guns or not. It's so fucking stupid, but that's what's pushed down everybody's yeah. throat now. Dude, I said that. <laughs> I said that. So uh, last couple of weeks, I was helping teach the basic SWAT course, right? And we run a regional SWAT school. So outside agencies send their officers uh, to our SWAT school from the region. So other states as well. When we had this SWAT school, they're all working together. And we had some young guys. We had some old guys. We had people of every color and ethnicity. We had straight up country white dudes. We had black dudes. We had Hispanic dudes. We had a female, right? We had someone, you know, we had a fucking uh, a, a gay person in there that we knew. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. I have yet to see it, dude. Right. And I told them one day they were fucking up. They were fucking up. And they were not a lot of them were not able to do their job, and I fucking. So you were cadre. I was You're cadre. running the course, and I told them how many people were students of the course. Hmm, fifteen. Okay, fifteen ish. I think it's fifteen. So it's a fifteen person group a with a lot of diversity. Fifteen in person it. group with a ton of every every diversity you could think of, uh -huh. right? And uh, that are also seeking a position on a SWAT team. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. And I told them straight up. Uh, they and you know, I fucking we we smoked them for it. And I said, look, I don't give a fuck what color your skin is, what religion you are, what political affiliation you are, what sexual orientation you are. All I give a shit about is can you fucking do the job or not? Yeah. And right now, you guys are you guys failing. can't. You guys are fucking Cause failing because you're fat. And yeah. Weak. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I said, so fucking stop being cops and go be some fucking go do something else. Go be a car salesman. Go be a fucking car salesman. Go sell insurance. That's right. Those are the you, those were your two go-tos yeah, yeah. today. And I said that's a good job. You can probably get paid well and get benefits. And people need cars to go to work. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> but don't be a yeah. fucking cop. <laughs> no, I mean literally, as we're sitting here talking, <laughs> is that wrong? Am I? <laughs> as we're sitting here talking and thinking about it, like the whole, I feel like the narrative was like the right doesn't like gay people. And I don't think I know one person that gives a fuck. Dude, one of my fucking favorite like, people in the world is fucking gay. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know any, I literally don't know one person that gives a fuck. Now, does it seem strange to some people? Well, yeah. Maybe if they're, if they're not used to that lifestyle or whatnot, you know? I no, mean, but, but I mean, when I look at like, as someone that's heterosexual and you see people that are like, embracing a gay lifestyle it's very different than how i've choose to live my life yeah, absolutely and so can i look at it and be like hmm, that's kind of a that's a weird that's a different way to live right but guess what i see people that are dressed in fucking like strange clothing or people right. that dye their hair or people that drive like cars that i would never drive right. like looking at another person and being like wow that's kind of different Right. All the day, I'm like, why would you ever fucking buy that car? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That has <laughs> you know? nothing to do with, like, disdain <laughs> right. or anger. I just don't understand it. Like, I don't know? understand it. Right. Like, and I don't. And I never fucking will. Yeah. That, that doesn't, I mean, I had fucking Sebastian on, and we talked about 
him being gay. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. He's a cool motherfucker. Yeah. And him and I text all the time, and he sexually harasses me because he thinks I'm cute. Yeah. And it's funny. <laughs> right, we right. There's banter about it. Right. And he even asked me, he's like, is it, does it bother you that I, the, the majority of my texts involve some form of sexual harassment? And I just like click the laughing emoji. Yeah, you right, know what yeah. I mean? It's like the narrative that's being pushed right. is a false narrative. Of, of course. And it's being, it's a false narrative on people's sexual orientation. It's a false narrative on people's race. Right. It's a false narrative on everything oh, yeah. because it's, it's easier for these elite cocksuckers sitting at the top of the throne to maintain what they have if we're pitted against if each we other. all hate each other right. rather than all of us unifying as one and hating them because they're all they're taking advantage of all of us yeah no matter what our side we fall they're taking our money yeah it's not the government's money no no like it's our money their job fucking is taxes, to bro. don't even get me started on fucking taxes get started on it like like dude they fucking I think uh, I think it was Dan Crenshaw that posted something that's like they realized the COVID relief package, the amount of money that's being spent on the COVID relief package equals fifty four hundred dollars yeah. per American for us to get fourteen hundred for us to get fourteen hundred right. in return. Right. How the fuck does that math work out? And oh, nobody yeah. and nobody fucking bats an eye at that. No. And meanwhile, Egypt and Pakistan oh, and Iran. fucking Iran and Russia, even Russia's get like Saudi people are going fucking hungry. Oh, dude, we give them fucking and you're taking money. our money away yeah. and you're fucking giving it yep. to all these places on planet Earth. And listen, dude, I'm a compassionate person. You're a compassionate person like children starving abroad. Like if we can help those people. I think we're all fucking about it. But we right? have children fucking starving here. That's my point. We got people that fucking have problems here. And I'm not I'm not diminishing what they're going of through. Course. But follow the money. Do you think that our fucking foreign aid is feeding starving children? Or do you think it's going from political elite cocksuckers on one side of the world to political elite cocksuckers on the other side 100%. of the world? hundred percent. So we they all can get know. their little contracts and fucking make each other wealthier. Yeah. And it's bullshit, dude. I'll tell you what. You know, so I lived in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, for mm -hmm. four years. And there's one thing that they do fucking awesome. Now, they're a newer country, right? They've had their independence. Well, now, so when I left, it was 44 years. So I think it's like 47 years now they've had their independence mm -hmm. from British rule. So they're a fairly new country. But there is such a sense of, sense of nationalism there. And no one bats an eye. Everyone supports it. Even the outsiders that live there. Right from other countries that live there and work there, it's called support, assimilation. Support their nationalism in the UAE. That's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. If you're gonna go there, yeah. If you're gonna live there, you should support where support you live. Support it. Now, when you live in the UAE, you you don't know you. There's no way you don't get citizenship. Like there's nobody no does. way nobody does unless you're Emirati born from an Emirati male. You don't get citizenship. That sounds racist, right? When when um, Emiratis are born, they're basically from the government given a certain amount of money that they receive when they become an adult at 18 or whatever. Uh, and then when they become an adult at 18, they're also given a parcel of land based on the locale of where their tribe is from, what tribe they come from. In the how UAE. much money do you know? It depends on your tribe. Got right? it. So there's a caste system. Right. Yep. And some tribes have a uh, um, higher affiliation based on the sheikhs and, and the royalty there and other tribes. So it depends on the tribe system. But nonetheless, they take care of their countrymen. Mm -hmm. Right. Now they're a wealthy country. So they help other countries within the Gulf region. There you go. Right. That, that um, they have influence in, but they take care of their countrymen first. No other expats in the country get shit. You can go there and you can work and you make an, can make a nice living, but you don't fucking get anything handed out for free. Yeah. You know, but they, they support their, their country and there's nothing well, wrong with that. And think about that. You need to be good at home before you can be good for other people. A hundred percent. And we talked about that with our friend Seth. Yep. This morning, you can, you can dial that all the way down from a national level to literally an individual to a personal level, where 
he was such a giving person yep. that he put everybody's needs before his, own. before his own. Yeah. To like his own detriment. Yeah. Like it affected his own happiness at times. Yep. And so how do you expect somebody to be good on their own if they're not the first priority? Right. Like I'm going to take care of myself first. Then I'm going to take care of my home. And that's not being selfish. No. Then I'm going to take care of my community. And then I'm going to take care of my country. And like, if things are good, then I don't think there's anyone on planet earth that has a problem with us feeding starving children all over the world. No. But when you're taking our fucking money that's while people problem. are starving here, that's a problem. Who the fuck is going to align with that? Dude, when I worked in the UAE, I was making a really nice wage. Like I was making more money than I ever thought I ever would be for being a fucking gun toter. You uh -huh. know? Um, why didn't you call me to join you on that contract? Yeah, this is before we fucking connected fucking <laughs> fucking the Greg and Greg show, dude. The Greg you know? and, Welcome to the Greg and Greg show. <laughs> All things Greg. If you're not Greg, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you're making a good salary. I was UAE. making a good salary, right? I was living over in UAE. I still owned owned a home here in Louisiana, right? That I had rented out. And uh, my kids were with me. My family was with me. I had nothing in the U.S. at that time other than I owned a house that I obviously had a mortgage on. So I'd known it. The fucking bank owned it. But I was being rented out. And the amount of federal taxes I still had to pay while working over in the UAE, living in the UAE, eating in the UAE, getting paid from a United Arab Emirates company. In Durham, in UAE Durham, mm -hmm. not in U.S. dollars, the amount of money that I still had to send home and pay in taxes, federal taxes, was fucking exorbitant, so bro. Who was paying your paycheck? The United Arab, well, this company that was owned is an Emirati-based company. So couldn't you just establish a bank account over there? I did. And get a visa? Yeah, I had a work visa. No, 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 not a work visa. I mean a fucking credit card. Yeah, I did. And just spend the money out of a fucking bank account that's based in UAE and the government never gets to know fuck all? So, no. That's the short answer? The, no. the short answer is no. And I can't remember all the specifics and the details. And I talked to a over I, – when I lived over there, I had an overseas tax specialist. Uh -huh. And basically – is that the government can track your your basically your spending your your quality of life your expenditures and where that money's coming from and yeah. then they'll still tax you on it and it's <sighs> fucking wild so i had to pay quarterly i basically had to pay estimated quarterly taxes and you wonder why people right and want to have an insurrection i don't mind paying a little bit because i'm still a u.s citizen of course and i still have to i still hold a u.s passport and they're still in emergencies or whatever uh, I still would need the, you know, to call on the, the, the privileges of being an American citizen. So you're saying, let me, let me clarify this. If you got arrested in Jordan and you were sitting in a Jordanian jail cell, right? You might need the U.S. State Department to I would say it's probably very react similar. On your, yeah, I'd, on your behalf. Yeah, I'd probably say it's very similar <laughs> to being arrested in a jail in Egypt and yeah. needing the U.S. State Department to, yes, uh, I, I mean, I would think, I would assume, so. I've yeah. referenced my Jordanian jail incident before Which we on the show, about on and people are like, I need to know what happened, <laughs> and I, my response is, you're not going to know what that's happened. That's right, that's right, yeah, exactly. So No, but check yes. this out. So, I bought a Forerunner in 2006, 2007, okay. right? And I drove that thing all the way until six months ago. Okay. Then I shout out Forerunner, my Fuck favorite yeah. vehicle. Awesome. And I bought another one. Yep. So now I have my new Forerunner and my old Forerunner. And I decide one of my family friends, right. named told, Levi, told yeah, story, and he's yeah. 16 years old. And I look at those boys like sons, right? right? Like I love those kids. I have, I was a big part of their life growing up. And I'm like, he just turned 16. I'm going to give you this Forerunner for $2,000. Very affordable price. Obviously helping him out. Of course. In his journey becoming a young man. He goes to get the license or the, the register it. And they said, actually, Blue Book is 6000 So that's what you need to pay taxes on. What? What are we fucking talking about? Right. I don't give a fuck what your book said. Right. I sold this car for $2,000. I paid for that car in full. That's my fucking chunk of metal right. out in my driveway. Right. And I want to sell it for $2,000. And they're saying you 
you still have to pay us for more yeah, than bullshit. that. That's bullshit. Right. Well, that's kind of where I People was. People should you be know? Ha- strung up oh, yeah. and hanging from fucking bridges oh, yeah. for that shit, dude. Dude, they really fucked me. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, the taxes that I had to pay really fucked me and what my goal was going over there, which was to save money for my family. And uh, what about the 330 rule? Did that apply to you? So, dude, the 330. It's, it's, it's only the first 80K, right? It's That's the thing. So it did apply to me. It's up now. It's a first hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay. Right? First hundred and ten thousand. So for people listening, I should clarify: if you're out of the country for more, because when I was deploying a ton, the rule was if you're out of the country for more than three hundred and thirty days consecutively, consecutively, then your first eighty thousand dollars, and you're saying now it's one hundred ten thousand dollars. Last, I mean, it are, might be more now, but tax free. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's where they get you consecutively, right? So you can't come home. So you can't come home. Well, I because of that, instead of coming home, I used to just go to Europe and shit. Right. And or Canada. Right. And I never snuck across the border and came home. <laughs> it did not happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean Play the game, that's though, it. You yeah, know? Exactly. Um and but there's some there's some fine print within there, right? There's fine print within even the three thirty rule. Like one of them was like you had to have a uh Man, I fucking wish I remembered now because this is good topics. But you basically had to have like a specific visa. Uh-huh. And you had to um, have a – so that's where they were getting me. I had to be – I had to have a dwelling home where I was living. 330 rule. You have to have a home allegedly. I was In like, the I do states a, or on no, no, the, no. wherever you're Wherever you're living. Or living. Okay. And I said, I do have a home. I'm paying rent. Well, no, that's something furnished by your by your employment. It's lodging furnished by your employment. So it's not your home? Well, it's taken out of my fucking paycheck. I still pay for it. Well, regardless if it's officially taken out or not, right. you're over there working for a, right. a company yeah, or yeah. a contract, and if they're paying for your housing... Yeah. But there's like some loopholes and stipulations to get it done, and it's, they don't make it easy at all. Well, that's, that's the fucking county right. or the government. Right. Okay. The majority of my miserable dealings with the government yeah. is on the county level. Yeah. So that's why that word slipped out. Yeah. Like they're constantly, this is what I've realized about the government. They think that if, like if they don't think you have any money, they're not going to fucking, they don't fuck with they don't you. Even, they don't even fuck with you. They don't even look at you. But if they think they can squeeze a fucking drop of oh, you, yeah. they now rest you're at, all of a sudden, they rest uh, at nothing. And what I found is when I built my gym, Oh, the, I love these stories. The buttercup. Yeah, well, I've, I think I've already ranted about a lot of the, <laughs> the fucking Snohomish County bullshit that I've dealt with. But the thing is, he's building a gym. He must be rich. That's the mentality, right? Oh, yeah. And it's like, actually, no. I made some equity on a house I sold, and I was able to turn it over and then put it into this project that... And anybody, and this is the fucking government is so out of touch with things because they don't know what it's like to fucking plan and budget and try and build and create. Because they're in debt. Every <laughs> single project that anybody has ever done, you fucking spend more money than you anticipated. Oh, 100%. You know? And that gym ended up costing a lot more money than we budgeted for. Yeah. But still, they tried to nickel and dime us everywhere they could, could get. Yeah. Uh, wetland fees. Uh, uh, Indian artifact fees, Intra, yeah. ultrasound fees, to the shit, to the point where it's just like, is this fucking, is this reality or am I in a yeah. simulation? Yeah. yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. It is, dude. Yep. But yeah, so federal taxes fucked me over there, you know, and like, I don't mind paying state taxes. I still own a home in this state. I'll pay state taxes because when I come home, which I plan on doing, yeah, I want my roads to be good. I want my public schools to be good, et cetera, et cetera. But to pay the amount of ridiculous, because of course I was making enough money over there that it bumped me up into a higher tax bracket as well. Well, I don't think anyone is averse to paying a tax when it is being spent reasonably. Of course. To enhance their quality of life and enhance their community. And that's what it really should be for. Of course that's what it should be for. It shouldn't be lining anybody's pockets. It shouldn't be fucking paying for lavish parties and i've talked about it before i've seen so much frivolous spending of government money and so have you we talked about this morning both of us worked contracts where we we delivered millions of u.s dollars 
to these different fucking government entities all throughout the Middle East. And I have pictures of it. I have pictures fresh off the mint, packaged $100 bills that's like five inches thick per bundle. And it's a fucking pyramid of these stacks that's four feet high. And we fill the whole back of the Suburban with $100 bills, drive down Route Michigan to the fucking Ramadi Bank and deposit like $10 million. Dude. And guess what happened? Uh, uh, you're going to be shocked to hear what happened to that money. Al-Qaeda Iraq seized it the next no. day. Don't say. They took the bank over by force. Of course, yeah. And they took all the money. Yeah. Who would have ever oh, suspected have yeah. that that would happen? Bro. But no, no. So that's on one hand an extreme of just fucking ridiculous, frivolous, frivolous spending. You know what I see all over my county? Fish crossing signs. Shut the fuck up. I swear to God, dude. You know how there's deer crossing signs? Yeah. So if you're near a body of water, a stream or a fucking lake, they have trout crossing signs. And I've lived there my I've been underwater, there. like no, 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 under the water, Bro, like in I've case you're there. scuba diving. I've lived there for forty years, and I've never seen a trout cross a fucking street. Cross the street. But here's the thing: what does <laughs> fucking dude? No, I'm serious. Fucking Bro. Luke's chuckling in the background. I can't I'm help serious. it, dude. That is the fucking like, most asinine thing I've ever heard. And you know, any county project, they have. They have a couple trucks out there. They have a couple flaggers. Well, before that, they have a committee for a committee for a committee. They have a fucking excavator. It takes all fucking day to put a fish crossing sign up. What? I mean, I would, I would be interested to know one sign. What's it cost? What's it cost? Start to finish. I want to know. I'm, I'm curious as to what the point of the fish crossing sign is for. I have no fucking idea. Like, are you supposed to, when you're driving down the street? So I can tell you. Are no, you no, supposed no. to like slow down and look both ways? So, dude. Is this it? That's it. That's it, dude. Those are everywhere in Snohomish County. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to hold the sign up right now. So Snohomish County, Washington, we have these everywhere. And dude, like the Pilcha. So there's a road called Dubuque. And it goes out to my parents' house and where I grew up, Mm -hmm. right? The bridge is 40 feet in the air. It's nowhere close to the fucking Pilchuck River. It's 40 feet in the air. And there's one of these on each end of the fucking bridge. Fish crossing. What's, I mean, what's the point of it? Bro, that's why I'm so fucked. Who thought that was a fucking important idea? That's my whole point. You got some fucking goon sitting in some office that just is like, oh, hmm, by the way, I, uh, I, I, did I, I think um, I'm Bob Hanley. Yeah, and I'm I Bob, apologize if your name's Bob Hanley. No, you're if your name's cool Bob dude. Hanley, you we can fucking hate you. You can fuck yourself. <laughs> I right? made that name up. I just made that name up the other day. We're fucking talking shit. <laughs> no, but seriously, you get these people that just come up with these ideas. I mean. Can you imagine if you were working? I, I literally, I can't. Fu- I'm not. No, dude. Imagine if you were I can't some type that. <laughs> of county employee and your job was, I mean, I would imagine if you're making signs that get hung up on the roadway, you should be specializing in some type of traffic mitigation or something, right? Or like doing some type of assessments where this is where the most collisions are. Right. Uh, oh, course. this is the areas where cars are striking deer yep. okay so let's analyze the data and then let's put signage accordingly right you're using logic bro at no point in this guy's career did he have a scenario presented to him where he said you know what fish are crossing the street here <laughs> and they're getting <laughs> they're getting <laughs> hit I can't even like, talk fucking seriously about God, it bro and so <laughs> and i'm gonna say there's 30 of these throughout the county so I mean, I'm, dude, now I'm really curious. So I'm now, really curious, times like, thirty fish crossing signs that are probably a thousand dollars a piece. But that's the thing, money at the government, it's not even real money to them. They just acquired it. Right. It just showed up in their bank account, and uh, Snohomish County Sign Department is allotted three hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year for updated signage. And you know what else? How many times have you heard this in the military well, or in law enforcement? Bothers, just, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I fucking about budget, right? If we don't spend all there of this year's That's budget, exactly. we won't get as much next year. Yep. Oh, fucking right. I've heard that at every government 
Ever organization I've ever, ever worked for in my oh, yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. Think about that mindset. God forbid you save some money. Right. Right? It's not your fucking money to start with. Right. But because they want to get that fucking next year's budget, piss all this away. In the military, we call it a spendex. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the ammo. Oh, yeah. Start just buying fucking knives. Dude. Yeah. Dude, How many stupid fucking giant dumbass knives did you get in the military that you'd fucking, I'd never fucking use this heavy piece of shit. Dude, in the U.S. Like Marshals. Buy some dumb shit. I've talked about this before on the show. Same thing. Oh, we're approaching the end of the fiscal year. So to make sure that we utilize all of our training budget to allow for next year's budget to be equal or greater, start putting in for schools, guys. Yeah. And that me sounds and, like Deputy U.S. So, Marshal so, Bob so, Hanley right there. So check this out. There's me and one other guy in my department that was high level jujitsu. And I get it. I don't probably need to be the guy to go to a two week or a one week MMA school. What you looking at? You, something screwed up? Did it turn off? Uh oh. Oh, we might have a technical we difficulty. We have a technical difficulty. We might be a time to get more ice and Jameson. No, no, no. The up. audio continues. Oh, yeah. We're good. All right, I'll shout when I go get ice for my Jameson. <laughs> so, what was I saying? Fucking, you're the two high level jujitsu okay. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably didn't need to be putting in. Luke for made me lose my train of thought. $5,000 each to go to an MMA school for a week. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. Without batting an eye. And it's like, hey, it was fun. And I, right. it was two marshals and a bunch of seals from Coronado. Right. And we beat the fuck out of each other for right. a week. And I'm glad I got to go, but it's pretty fucking unreasonable. Yeah. You know? And I was young and I wasn't as fucking like, like today, if crazy Anderson was in that same scenario and that came down the pipe, Hey guys, start spending our training budget. I would be the first to be like, does anyone see the fucking problem here? Right. Or are we all just going to pretend that it's cool to blow through taxpayers dollars so we get more of their taxpayers dollars next year. Yeah. And here's the thing. That's the US Marshal Service. That's one office, that's one district, right? And let's say they blow $60,000. No big deal, right? right? Times that by 94 districts. Oh, yeah. Then times that by 15 different agencies. Yeah, I was going to say that's you know one what I'm agency. saying? And, and those are small numbers compared to the military. Yes. And before you know it, we're fucking trillions there's trillions of dollars that have been wasted. Oh, yeah. And like, I needed I needed summer school when I went to high school. I'm not a fucking math wizard. But if Ranger can look at this situation and be like, you know what? This math math doesn't Fiscally, this make doesn't sense. seem to make right. sense. Right. How the fuck are the smartest people in the world supposedly right. unable to come up with some yeah. kind of answer? Yeah, because they're not. No, they're not. You got Vegas. fucking dummies. At all levels of government, you got dummies at all levels of Congress, and now we have a dummy all the way in the highest position of government. Yeah, that is why we need guys like Joe Kent in Congress. Shout out! Fuck yeah, Joe Kent, dude. Seriously, yeah. people that are responsible, people that are putting the country's needs before their own. Absolutely, and and fucking using. Let's be honest. Let's fucking using common sense. Common sense, dude. To For approach most, situations. The majority of politicians are in there because it's self-serving. Yep. That is what it is, dude. Yep. And I'm sure, like, you've been kicking around some ideas of different political aspirations. I've well, been, no, I wouldn't say political aspirations, but some people have been suggesting and pushing me, and I know I'd be miserable, but I think I could make a difference. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. You're kicking around that idea. We are talking around your fucking dining room table. So it's, it's something that's on your mind. Yeah. I've had lots of people reach out to me and like, you need to go into politics. You need to go Come into on, politics. Come on, the fucking Greg and Greg show. <laughs> <my> fucking <laughs> no. political. And my thing. response is that you got one shot at life. This is it. Yeah. Like the last 20 years of my life have been fucking eaten up by the government. Yeah. And I don't regret it. I did a lot right. of fun shit. Yeah. I know a lot of cool people. Like that was my path, right? right. But to give it another 20 years, to be part of that cesspool, yeah, and that I'll, swamp, dude. I'll be honest. There's look, not much. Look what they did to Trump, Trump, dude. Less. When somebody that's not part of their fucking right. club tries to get into their club, they get fucking torched. Yep. And it's like, I don't, I don't know if any reasonable men like us I are interested think of in that. I'd rather do less, dude. Because I'll tell you, the first time that 
some guy comes into your office and was like, oh, well, you know, I think you did that because you just, you're just a bigot and you don't support LGB. I'd, I'd say, you know what? Eat a dick. I, exactly. And then if he didn't get the fuck out of my office, yep. he'd get clubbed over the head. Yep. And then it would be on. And then 397 would go to 398 murders <laughs> a year. <laughs> That's right. Because, dude, I have made, I mean, I've made the commitment to myself that if shit ever goes crazy, I'm not being put in a fucking cage. Oh, fuck. No. There's no cage no, no, for no, Greg no, Anderson. No, 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 no. So if you push me to that point, yeah. it's on. That's it. Yeah. And I think every fucking man should feel like that, especially if you're if what you believe in is righteous and you know right. you're on the side right. of right. Absolutely. You don't get to put me in a cage, motherfucker. Nope. nope. You get to try and take me and put me in a cage. Yep. And, and let me know how that works out yeah, for yeah. you. Yep. And you'll get me eventually, but I'm not going down easy. Right. Like 100%. that's I mean, that's kind of the fucking like that's kind of like the foundational principles that of our, formed this of country. Our country. Go fuck yourself. That's right. Yeah. Of our fucking country fucking storming fucking crossing the river and fucking Christmas night or whatever. Yeah, like, dude, know, fucking... That's what makes me so crazy about what's going on nationwide yeah. is that everybody is willing to just take a back seat, shut up, be a good little boy. Your government wants to keep you safe. Here's your fourteen hundred dollars. Here's your fourteen hundred dollars. And it's you know what those people are? All the same motherfuckers that were loyal to the crown. Yep. That's what they are. Oh, yeah. I don't want to upset the crown. Yeah. You know, oh, they, the king says he might send his troops over here. Fucking, I'm going to put the, my powdered wig on and fucking the go king's cross the river. Gonna, the king wants me to put up housing and allow the troops to sleep in my house. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. Where is the fuck you spirit in this yeah. country anymore? It's gone away. A lot it's of it. It's gone away, dude. Like we had that fucking. You nice. Oh, Luke's getting get a battery, battery too. Grab, the, grab the bag of ice though too. Okay, yeah. Fuck. No, but that's the truth, man. Like some of the things get that we talked about. Thanks, homie. Some of the things that we talked about over the last couple of days is like everybody is so quick to just fall in line and be a good little boy, and I'm fucking disgusted, dude. Yep. Like, <sighs> yeah. If you yeah. want to allow the government. To just lead you around on a leash, you've lost, like, you've lost identity life of is, what an American is supposed to be. Life has been too easy, bro. Life is too fucking easy. People don't I have agree. to, look, people don't have to fight. And I don't mean fight, like, I don't mean, like, fight the fucking, the, the fucking hordes coming in and, and battle. I mean, people don't have to fight for anything hard in life anymore. Just going through adversity. Everything, there's no adversity in life anymore. Any, everything's given to them. You know, and it, it just, it, it makes life too easy. And I hate to say it, because not all people are created equal. We're not all equal. Right? Shout Believe out. Believe it or not. Shout out to my homie, Charles Dara. That's S his saying. Some people are more athletic. Some people are more intelligent. Some people are more gifted. Some We're not all fucking equal, but the problem is- So you don't think that if I trained full-time, I could be Usain Bolt in a foot race? No, I, I, I didn't don't, put I don't in think enough effort. You could. I don't think you could. I know, Racist. I know. Yep. You're saying that because I'm white. So, you know, the fucking thing is like, in our current society, several hundred years ago, if you were a fucking idiot- you probably got eaten by a fucking saber tooth tiger or some shit. Yeah, that's, you know, that's more than a more than a couple hundred years ago. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> fucking because you're fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. right. You couldn't a, read the signs. No, it's a self correcting error. Right. Nowadays, stupid people can fucking thrive. Weak and, people. I hate to say it, and it's sad if you lose anyone. It's idiocracy. But genetically weak people that would have fucking died and not survived are being kept alive with modern medication. And look, nobody wants to lose anyone close to them, but like it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And our society is getting fucking weaker. Well, bro, that is why this whole COVID thing. I saw the writing on Thank the wall. Dude. Appreciate it. Of Cheers. the fucking COVID pandemic. Launcha. A year ago. Oh yeah. Which is why I spoke out against it. Yep. And here we are a year later. And everyone will be shocked to hear. Well, I thought it was two weeks to flatten the curve, yeah. bro. The data is coming out that 80% yep. of the COVID victims were obese. Yep. 
Now, is an obese person have worth and value? Do they have people that love them? Yes, Are they important people? Like all that stuff. I'm not disputing all that. But what you're doing is you're completely abolishing personal responsibility. Of being healthy. Of being healthy. To the point. Dude, think about this. Abolishing personal responsibility to being healthy to the point where everybody else in society needs to stay home, lose their business, lose their livelihoods, lose their lose mental their health, fitness, lose their mental health because a percentage of people don't want to take care of themselves. Right. That's where we're at, dude. Yep. And it doesn't bother anybody. Like it's fucking mind boggling. It's Campbell's soup time, dude. Fucking Campbell's soup. So one of my jujitsu students, he's a kid, but well, he's 16. So oh, he's, yeah. he's in the, tr- he's in the transition phase. Yeah. From kids. Is that how we ended up getting talking about that fucking story and talking about Campbell Soup? Yes. So is that story? That's that story. All right, carry so on. He's 16 years old. And I don't know if this is nationwide or if this is just radical left wing. I had been in a couple of stores that had the one way arrow okay. things down. So aisles. in Seattle, the grocery stores have one way right. aisles. Yeah. You can only walk down aisle one this way, and then you got to turn them, go down yeah. aisle two this yeah, way. Yeah. And you got, yeah. So if you're looking for Captain Crunch. They got arrows stickered on the floor. If you want fucking Captain Crunch because you feed yourself bullshit, high fructose corn syrup, crunchy preservatives for breakfast, and you walk three feet past it because you were checking Instagram and you missed Captain Crunch, you can't take three steps backwards. You got to do a full circle. You understand what I'm saying? That's what they expect. A full lap because... Evan, who's one of my jiu-jitsu students, walked 10 feet. The wrong way. The wrong way in a grocery store. And some worthless 45-year-old obese fat fuck started screaming at him. Hey, you're walking the wrong way. You're walking the wrong way. Like, again, should be a fucking death sentence. Campbell's soup. That's Stroll a, directly down the wrong way. That's what I said. Fucking bash him in the brain with it. You want to fucking... Sc- and his dad was with him. Boy, the fuck. Campbell's like, not Progresso. You, yeah, not Progresso. Not fucking Chef, Chef Boyardee. <laughs> fucking Campbell's Soup. Campbell's Soup. You fucking... If you're a fat, weak fuck and you scream at my child oh, for fucking, walking down an aisle... We talked about this the other night. I will... Say my, to my kids anything. You I will take me. Campbell's Soup. I would choose bean with bacon. Bean... Because nice that's choice. nostalgic for me. Okay, I was, nice that's my, my, nice I choice. ate a lot of that shit growing up. Nice choice. See, I'm and a I would bar- knock a, I'm every tooth out of his fucking head. Yeah. But here's the thing. Then I would be the one. Yo, you're the monster, dude. I'm the monster. You're the monster. Some fat, worthless fuck yeah. is allowed to you don't berate. Care about, you don't care about people. He's allowed to berate children. And you, we're not allowed to do anything. You want old people to die. That's exactly right, dude. That's the fucking narrative. <laughs> that is the fucking narrative, That's though. Narrative. Because of the way we fucking... We, I want, we him want to, fucking old people or obese people to die. Because I don't want you screaming at my fucking child. And and here's the thing, dude. If you screamed at someone's child 50 years ago, you would have... If you screamed at someone's child 20 years ago... Bro. You know what I'm saying? I fucking almost got into a lot of trouble when I was in the Abu Dhabi, in, in the UAE. For someone screaming at your child? And that, well, here, let me make a caveat on that. If my child's doing something fucked up and you're a reasonable person of course. and you see it and you say, hey, young man, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing Where's that. Where's your parents? I, as the parent would be like, hey, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry that I didn't fucking get to it faster. Right. I'm not saying that other reasonable adults don't have the right. Right. To, there's a way to do There's a way to do it. it. And berating them because yeah. of your fucking pathetic left-wing ideology is the fastest way to get you fucking killed. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I put a guy through a fucking rack stand of potato chips in a fucking gas station. <laughs> he well, didn't do it. Give didn't. a little more backstory. So I'm out of fucking... And Jackson was young, right? So this is now... Jackson is nine. Been home going on almost four years. So... Yeah, he was like, he was like four, right? And I'm mm-hmm. at a gas station with him. The Aussies say servo. It's kind of cool. I'm at a gas station with him and we're, stand, we're, we're standing in line and some fucking piece of shit from another country in the gas station, like Jackson's kind of moving around. He's not bumping into anyone. He's right next to me. And he's what, five at the time? Like four or five. Okay. And the guy like puts his hand out like this and like pushes him over out of the way and I fucking pivot and just went 
wham, and fucking slammed him fucking palms to the chest as hard as I could. Fucking knocked him through some potato chips. <laughs> and the fucking Filipinos that are running the gas station, all the gas stations in the UAE are run by Filipinos. We're fucking freaking out, screaming. I'm like, Jackson, we got to go. We, we can't get the fuck out We of can't here. get your fucking lollipop today, bro. I'm sorry. We, we got to fucking run, dude. Because <laughs> well, I, I get fucking arrested, dude. I could tell I'll you. get arrested. In Afghanistan. Yeah. The local police officers beat the fuck out of all the kids. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? It's same in Egypt, dude. I, I saw that. the shit out of them, I saw it in dude. Egypt. They fucking like carry these like yep. these fucking wooden, I guess bamboo maybe, but they're slotted so they clack. Yep. Right? Same thing, dude. And dude, they'd fucking ride around in their fucking scooters and fucking wail on these kids, bro. Dude, I went, to, I got to and, go and to bro, Cairo. I, okay, go ahead. And I got to go to Giza to the pyramids. Uh huh. And see the fucking Great Pyramid and the Sphinx and all that shit. And dude, it's filled with kids begging. And the police, when the tourist groups would come to tour, the police would run out there and clear all the little beggar kids off by just fucking whacking the shit out so of them. So very similar. That's what I was going to say. In Afghanistan, it's like uh, you're on patrol and you're coming down the road. They're going to clear a way for you. So they think they're helping you right. because their culture is beat the fuck out of kids right. and fuck kids in the ass. Yep. Like that's their culture. And I shouldn't say that. Shout out, Bill Burgo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, is that fucking wrong? I, just, I, there is a large part of the Afghan culture that I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, but there's a lot of shitheads. Oh yeah, too. Yeah, we can't just like just like though, everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, so they think they're doing you a favor, but they're doing it by beating the fuck out of a bunch of young kids. Of course, and it just makes you want to put a fucking hole yeah. through their head. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're just culturally different. No, no, you're actually they're hurting. Shitheads. You're actually hurting children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're shitheads. Not culturally yeah. different. What uh, else we got on that list so over there, bro? The couple things. Where are we at on time? Just out of curiosity. Hour 50. Okay, so we'll, we'll wrap it up here at about the two hour mark because we're almost done with our list. Dude, no way. Uh, no fucking way. Oh, yes. Yes way. The, uh, the Port of Seattle, everybody's favorite police department. And I got some good. I got some big news Ooh. coming out oh. about the port, oh. but I'm not going to release all it right, all right, until right. probably the next podcast. But everybody will be shocked to hear that they're fucking another police officer over because he doesn't stand with the radical left narrative. And the police chief there, who on his surface seems like a cool guy, bends a knee to these fucking bitches. Yeah. But that'll come out soon enough. Um, they've banned chokeholds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Banning it. Banning it. Yep. And it even says in the policy update, even in deadly force situations. Which is fucking bullshit because when you are fighting for your life, you'll do anything and everything that you can to survive. Plain and simple. And if that means fucking picking up a rock or a brick or a stick or a knife and fucking hitting them in the head or stabbing them in the fucking eye, you will fucking do it. Well, just imagine you're in a fight for your life. You get someone's back. You're in a position to choke him, but the guy has a knife or something, right? Yeah. You have to choose your own death over winning the fight. <laughs> That's, is that what they expect? Hey, I have a good opportunity to put this guy away and fucking get him into custody and or choke him till he fucking dies. But because it's a violation of policy... I'm going to choose my own death. So let me get this straight. That's what they're saying. Let me get this right. That's so let what me get this. You can still shoot someone with a fucking gun. You can still. But you can't choke you someone. You can still smash somebody's skull open with a bowling ball. Because it's like we talked about. Once deadly force is authorized, the means in which it is Doesn't applied, matter. it's a moot point. You know, think if, if you're on top of a guy who is trying to push a knife into your chest, saving private Ryan, Ryan style. Yeah, just fucking, uh, uh, and you're yeah. fighting, and well, and there's a fucking grapefruit sized boulder next to you. What do you think you're gonna do with that? You smash him in the head with it. You're gonna fucking crush his head, and that is legal and just. But you can't choke him. But don't choke him. Yeah, don't do that. Right? It's bad. It's bad, it's bad dude. And so we were talking about that, and it got us talking about training. Police officer training. Yes. And I told everyone, if you don't want to hear about being a cop and jujitsu, just don't, turn, yeah, you should have yeah. turned this episode off two hours ago. Yeah. But as a fucking police officer, there are some departments that still allow jujitsu. 
So what are they doing? I think it's gaining steam. I think it's going to come full circle. I think the people that make these fucking idiotic policies, like no chokeholds, their never day, been, yeah. well, their day is going to come. Their day of reckoning is going to come. And departments like, I don't, I don't want to say their name because I don't know exactly all the details behind it. And I, I don't know. You tell me and I'll say their name. I, don't, I can well, say no, whatever. I know, but I, I don't know if it's hype. I, want. I don't want to spotlight them because I don't know if what they're doing is hype because check it out. Gracie Jiu Jitsu guys is is kind of steam heading that fucking uh -huh. the the media portion for that agency and we can have say our own shit about I can talk about Gracie University and the fucking farce of getting online certifications um, and how his grandfather yeah 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 developed Gracie Jiu Jitsu Gracie Jiu Jitsu listen dudes bros check it out uh, but uh, listen it's going to come full circle I'm going to tell you guys. Jiu-Jitsu is on the rise, bro. Everybody or anybody that thinks you can learn Jiu-Jitsu over your laptop is feeding yourself yep. a fucking lie. Come on down here and 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 do your your uh, Grace University purple belt test. And, and, I, and I'm not test, saying test that to shit on fucking anybody or shit on Henner or shit on Hedon. But guess what? You can't learn jiu-jitsu through a computer. No. Nope. So if you're teaching jiu-jitsu through a computer, a I have to say what you are doing is I feel it's ethically incorrect. So should I say, should, you want me to go into this? Should I go in this? Yeah, I, go, I, it's go not, ahead. I, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go into it because it's whatever. Fuck. I don't give a fuck. It, it's not, it can't hurt me. Um. So I recently went through the Gracie University. Gracie Survival Tactics GST mm -hmm. instructor course online. Well, and I'm glad that you have because we've talked about this a lot. A lot of silly. And now you've been through it. It is. And I will say this. The reason I went through it, or I should say the reason I was put through it, because I was, I was put through it by my organization, by my agency, was because it's a national standard that is being, being utilized by a lot of law enforcement agencies. And... It's a liability issue for the for the for my agency. So now they can say, "Hey, our instructors have been through this instructor certification course, which is a national standard. So li li liability wise, they're covered." I get that. Yep. I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not I'm not shitting on that. I'm gonna shit on that because it's bullshit. I agree. I it's, agree. It's bullshit. Like, oh, this this is your post certification, and this is nationally recognized, and this is our train the trainer program, and this is this many hours, and now you're certified to go back to your department. It's all fucking right. bullshit. Right. And then that's what if it comes you're down not to. willing to show up at the gym and put the hours in repetitively, r regularly, you will fucking always suck. Yes, agree. And all these agents and you won't really know shit. And nobody wants to call it what it is, and that's why I'm calling it what it is. If you're not willing to show up and put the hours in. You will always fucking suck. Yep. And that's not even being a dick. That's not saying it like disparagingly. There's a lot of people that don't train jujitsu. Right. And guess what? Their jujitsu sucks. Right. Right. It is what it is. It is what it is. But to now to convolute it and say, oh, well, uh, we offer this program that's this right. many. It's a, it's a, it's a 40 hour course. And then now you're certified as a, a trainer and you can take that back to your department and then you can do quarterly training with your department and you can show them these moves. It's all money-making, convoluted fucking right. bullshit, it's bullshit. Dude. And that's the thing. Me being the instructor, you know, going through that course is, is kind of bullshit, but they should be able to articulate and I could give them the proof and the data that I'm a subject matter expert in this, right? Mm -hmm. and that should be enough of for liability coverage. Our grappling jujitsu defensive tactics instructor is a subject matter expert because of X, Y, Z. Because I do this every fucking day. Every fucking day, I'm on the match grappling, fighting, wrestling. Or how about you just say, hey, anybody that doesn't think I'm a subject matter expert. Yeah, come on. Proved, proved to me otherwise. Right. Judge, I'd and like I, to lay some mats out in court, please, and <laughs> call this fuck stick over here. No, but it's the truth because, <laughs> and I told you when I was working as uh, on the DT cadre on my department, I got so fed up with it that I told the the sergeant right. that was she was in charge of the DT cadre. Right. No, it's bullshit. And she doesn't know fuck all about fighting. Yeah. I don't even know if she's ever been in a fight. And I told her, I was like, you know what? 
this isn't this isn't working for me. And I said, I'm not willing to sell people snake oil yeah. anymore. And I got a bunch of people's feathers rough ruffled. And we sat down, we talked, and she said, Listen, what if you being on the DT cadre can inspire someone to start training? Like and we I talked said, about this morning. I said, Fair enough. I'll eat my words, but I'm going to sell it as that. Right. Nothing you learn in your quarterly training is going to be applicable to the street. Right. What we're going to use this op this this two hour block of training is I'm going to show you some moves. We're going to talk about some positions, and then you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Man, these things that we that we were shown today, I need to be good at them." Right. And the we only way I'm going to be good today, at them. Yeah. Is by putting in the time. That's right. That's how it has to be, man. Yeah. There's no way around it. Yeah, man. It's crazy. You know, the this the GST course that I went through. And look, I've never met Henner Gracie. I've never met Huron Gracie. And they both um, might strangle me unconscious. They might. They both might fucking wreck me on the mat. And I, so that's a good thing to reiterate. I'm not talking about their jitsu. No, I'm not talking about they their jitsu jiu at all. Absolutely. I'm talking about a program where you're taught to grapple online. I have an issue with that program. Yeah. One, I have an issue that it's an online program. I, I shouldn't even say it. I don't have an issue that it's an online program or an in-person program because, in my opinion, it doesn't matter if you're an officer that doesn't have any grappling training and doesn't train wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu regularly, and you go to their three-day course, their three-day GST online, their three-day three, three -day in person GST instructor course, when you come back to your agency, you don't know fuck all. Well, dude, that You cannot do shit. That literally means, like, when I get someone that signs up on Monday, the following Monday, they're ready to they're teach. teaching a police department. Oh, yeah, they're ready to go. That's what that is. I, I know. I know. And it's absurd. 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 Like, I can tell you, a teaching position inside of an academy, it's a grad, it, it, it increases like incrementally, right? After you put in probably three years, I would say three years, you can work with the children now. Would you say that's a, a rough estimate? Two to three years. Yeah. I mean, we, we put... And really no less than, but we let some of our blue, and I say some, we let some of our blue belts teach and work with the kids. And that means they've been training at a minimum of two years. That's right. And so my, ch my, our kid and our youth program is one of them is a purple belt and a blue belt. Yep. And then the other program is myself and my assistant is a really, really good blue belt. Right. And so he's put in the time. He's there four days a week for the last three years. And now he's kind of progressed into a little bit of a leadership position within the academy, right? right. That's for the kids program. Right. Now you start talking about the adult program. I don't have, I will have purple belts cover adult programs very rarely, right. but sometimes. Right. Because a purple belt has a lot of jujitsu. A, a lot of jujitsu. And, a lot and of it depends on the purple belt as well. But I do the same thing. I have, I have, uh, a couple of purple belts that are very technically savvy and occasionally when a, one of the higher level guys cannot teach, yeah. I ask them to so teach. So I for example, since I'm down in New Orleans right That's now. Right. Hey, good job. I like it. Uh I have a, a female purple belt, her name's Ariel. She covered one of my classes because she also wanted to. Right. Because that's kind of the purple belt, like as you start to progress, it's in you're inspired to kind of want to give back to the academy 100%. and teaching. And that's right? your job. That's that's part of your job as a purple belt. And so she asked me, "Hey, can I cover one of your classes? I know you're going to be out of town for a week." And I said, "Yeah, uh, you can cover. How about Tuesday night?" Right. I've had a purple belt teach one class at my academy in the last year, right? And it was on Tuesday. Yeah. Anything outside of that is brown and black belts. Yeah. Right. So if I'm going to be teaching a room full of people. I expect you to have in in Ariel the purple belt that taught Tuesday night. She's been with me for five years, so she's been with me for five years. Five years and yeah. got to teach one class on Tuesday. Right. right. Think about that, I dude. Know. But dude, three days, bro, in Torrance. So three could, days, you know. train the trainer. Now you're ready to. And, so, and, and, and look, here's the thing that's a problem with it is 
And it's no fault of the individual that attends that. You're just going through your your department's, hey, they recommended this curriculum. Here I go. And then you show back up to your department. It's like, well, um... This is uh this is so side control. They grab control. the wrist like this, yeah. and then the and, and it's like have, right. You have no knowledge. You, you d- have no knowledge, but you don't understand. You have no knowledge, right? Like my whole thing is, and look, I don't fault the Gracie. Uh, I don't fault Henner and Huron for it. They're they've got a business. They're making. They're make. I fault the agency. Yes, for not having the fucking gall of saying, "Look, you want to be the head DT instructor." Here's a membership that we're paying for you to go to your local jujitsu or MMA gym, but you have to train three days a week. Yep. You want to be our DT instructor? Cool. Here you go. We'll pay for you, but you're going to be a We'll get you on legitimate. the Adopt-A-Cop program. Yeah. Something. Sh- shout out. Yeah. Shout out. Adopt-A-Cop. BJJ.org. And we're going to help you become extremely proficient. Become a subject matter expert. And but then- it takes fucking time, dude. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Yep. It takes time. It shit doesn't happen overnight. But, I mean, there's conceptual problems with that program, I think. And uh, unless you're a subject matter expert, you don't see them. You think it's good. And it's going to get officers hurt, I think. Well, no, and that's where that's where the biggest issue comes into play. Because the people that are going through it, it, it goes right back to what we were saying about a female. It's a three hour self defense. It's a different course. version. It's a it's an enhanced version right. of a self defense seminar. Right. Absolutely, you're gonna go out on the street and think you're ready for combat, right? And you're fucking not. Right. And it's the same thing you told the kids this morning at the police academy. Yeah. You know. And I want to come back down here and strangle some of those guys. Oh, dude! As soon as my back is healed up, fucking getting old sucks. But as soon as my back is healed up, fucking we're doing it. But. So let's, let's, uh, cause I see it on there and we didn't talk about the range. We did a little bit, but go ahead. We, we went out to the range a little bit. So you came down here as kind of a precursor to our guns and geese. So we could iron some stuff out. We could prep, we could get some gear and kit and, and targets and all that shit ironed out and go on the range and tool up a little bit, right? Yeah. You haven't been able to get on the range for almost a year. Yeah, a long time. You know? And you want to come down here and I wanted to show you the curriculum that we're going to roll out. So we're on the same page, et cetera. And just make sure that the camp runs smoothly. And we got out to the range, but it goes into people that go to a one day NRA course on a Saturday. Yeah. And now all of a sudden they're ready for a gunfight Mm -hmm. and it's not that way at all. You know, and you could see even how rusty I was because I don't shoot that much anymore. You know, there was a time where I was shooting multiple times a week. I don't shoot that much anymore. And you could see how rusty I was, how inconsistent I was. And with training and recency builds consistency. Um, and every all these things are perishable. All these skills, everything we do in life is perishable, you know? And that's why it's important to do it all the time. But, you know, we got you back, dialed in pretty good. You're I felt fucking, pretty good. You're fucking shooting good, dude. Well, and that's the thing. Once you have a decent level of proficiency, I always tell people, I'm a purple belt on a pistol. That's kind of where I rate myself. I feel like I'd say, I know you're, my, I'd say you're brown belt. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you might be a rusty brown belt, well, but you're, you. I'd say you're brown belt. Well, bro, because that's the thing. It's like, I know my way around a gun. I know how to handle a gun. Yeah. I know how to be safe with a gun. I know how to get rounds on target, but I have to look at some of the peers that I've worked with. Right. And they. Yeah. Well, there's levels. Oh, shoot. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying though. Yeah. And that's why I feel like, yeah, I'm proficient enough and comfortable enough. I can teach right. firearm fundamentals. But at the fucking end of the day, when you take a substantial amount of time off, it's gone, dude. Oh, yeah. But it comes back quickly. It comes back quickly. Yeah. Because you still have that foundation. Yeah. Like anything. But that's going back to kind of being a subject matter expert. You know, it's the same thing, you know, going back to combatives and, and defensive tactics for law enforcement. Well, how many people have you had show up to the gym that are like, hey, you know, I, I got a purple belt in like 2016, but then I got my girlfriend pregnant and then I had to move for work. And uh, it's literally been like four years. I've had one guy that's like, can you start me over? And then you roll with them. Bro, that purple belt's still in there. Right, right. Make no gotta, fucking mistake right. about we it. We just got to knock the rust off. Your jiu not great right, right. now. But that purple belt's still in oh, there. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's the same thing with shooting, you oh, know? It's, it's, it's identical, and, it's, and and it comes back quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you put the work in, it comes back quick, you Plus know? Plus, we were shooting steel, shoot. and st- yeah. there's just something about steel. 
Yeah. There's so much more Go fun. Go to the Instagram page. You'll ding, see, ding, you'll ding, see ding. a picture of old, old fucking snake here getting rounds, <laughs> getting rounds on steel. And we were supposed to get more today. I was faster. I'm just saying. Yes, yeah, so we were supposed to get more today, but I had kitchen cabinets delivered and I needed you to help me unload them. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. What else is just pertinent information that you need to share with did us? We, did we cover everything on that fucking yeah, list? The list is the list is used up, dude. The list is used up. Go out there and train, man. You know, fucking everything in life. Cap- be capable. Be, mm-hmm. be capable. And we talked about this a little bit. We said this yesterday. We went to a, a Jersey Mike's sub shop, right? Yep. And the manager there, and I'll give a shout out, the Jersey Mike's in Hammond, Louisiana. The manager's Rob. He runs the Slidell one sometimes. Yeah. And he's fucking awesome. And we walk in, and he's happy, and he's greeting us, and there was human interaction. Just be fucking good at whatever it is you do. I don't care what you do. Your chosen profession. We were talking about garbage men the other night. Yeah. How the garbage men that work in your neighborhood. Our fucking garbage men are studs, bro. Studs. They fucking cruise around in the back of the truck. They're fucking running up and down the street, manually putting all the trash cans in the fucking garbage truck. Like, they're good at what they do. They don't spill trash all over the fucking ground. When they do, they fucking clean it up. They're good at their job. Just be fucking good at what you do. Take pride in whatever you do. And if you don't have the desire Go do something to else. be good at what you do, Go do something else. that's what you call a clue. Right, yeah, that's yeah. an Go indicator. Find a different it's time to work. move on because yeah, you yeah. should want to be good at for what sure. you do. Absolutely, for sure. Just be good at what you do. Yeah, dude. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Fuck. It's it. Life is easy. Life is easy. Life is fucking easy. Like, I used to think about that shit all the time, like, because our entire youth was spent deploying to combat zones all over the world, and at the very baseline foundation of every single conflict worldwide is that people can't just be fucking cool. No. No. They just can't be cool. Conflict, bro. Yeah, dude. Everybody, people need conflict. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the first to say conflict can be fun. Yeah, I kind of like it a little bit too. But if you're the person creating it, you're a fucking piece of shit. Right. Agreed. Agreed. I you like know? finishing conflict. That's right, dude. All right. Well, that's it. I'll be back down here the in Greg about and two Greg weeks. Show. Fuck yeah. Guns and geese. Maybe we'll do another episode of the Greg and Greg show. Fuck it just yeah. depends. I'm going to look at feedback. If people are saying on my YouTube channel that you're a fucking piece of shit and they're fucking sick that, of you. Fucking other Greg's fucking piece yeah, of shit. I might not allow you back on. Yeah. But if you get positive feedback, it's all about ratings. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, man. That's a wrap. Sayonara.